Broadcast live once again from Lincoln, Nebraska. Phoenix, PICXF, Pippa Cook, Radio.net, PICXF, and our Cook's 96 World YouTube channel. A Cook and Pimp in here from the Minion High School, Jim Rich Barnett. Bob Dolby putting the headset on tonight again. We're working him like no other. Where am I? What am I doing? <laughs> well, you and Mark had a great uh, pair of games last night. Uh, I know you were watching the Lady Bison out uh, on our YouTube channel, by the way. It's, it's streaming. You guys had a couple of knockdown drag up fights last night, didn't you? Yeah, there was uh, not one for the beach. So, again, um, very, very interesting to see how they respond. Lady Bison obviously played last night, and Minden played uh, on Thursday, so they have had that extra day of rest, so to speak. So we will see what happens. We'll hear from head coach Amy Schall coming up. We just heard from head coach Taylor Malsby of Minden. It's a big game for the McCook girls. We'll hear from a coach a little bit. We had a chat with her in Coach's Coffee Club program this morning. McCook wins this. They'll get that four seed I think no matter what, and it won't have to make the trip to Ainsworth. On the, on, if they lose it, they'll probably have to make the trip to Ainsworth a week from Monday. Yeah, that's about a, what, about a 400-mile difference <laughs> round trip uh, to Ainsworth and back. So, again, big win here. And, again, this would be a win that would be quality points, too, for McCook. I mean, obviously, uh, Minden at 11-3, and three, I believe that's a Division One team. So, uh, again, as far as points go. So, again, uh, Lady Bison, yeah, a lot to play for tonight. And hopefully last night uh, didn't take too much out of them. But... I'll tell you what, they uh, certainly experienced pressure from Hastings all the way through that game as well. Take a break. We'll hear more from uh, on our Bison pregame. Head coach Amy Schall will join her coming up here shortly on Kix 96-1.
Rich Barnett and Bob Golke back here at Minden, Nebraska. Getting ready for the first of two here on Kicks 961, HighPlainsRadio.net, our KIC YouTube channel. As uh, both teams, Southwest Conference foes, could be Bob, maybe the first of a couple of meetings here for the next couple of weeks. Certainly possible. Southwest Conference uh, tournament coming up in two weeks, I believe. Uh, so certainly possible. Week, week from Monday. Week from Monday. Week from Monday, so Monday so not yeah. even two weeks yeah. and everything. So, yeah. And, again, you referenced kind of how important this game is for some seeding for that particular tournament. But, you know, frankly, this is just what we're hoping for is a nice quality performance and a quality win for the Lady Bison here. Be nice to knock off a foe here, 11-3 uh, and three on the season. So, again, let's uh, go ahead and team up. Minden's got a top four seeding already wrapped up with their record, though, with three uh, seeds. McCook would love to be the seed because you top four get the home game. As we mentioned earlier, if McCook having to lose this game is a possibility, they would have to go to Ainsworth in that a week from Monday in the first round game. Yeah, again, boy, that just makes for an extra long day for, for everybody for that type of thing. So, again, as if you needed way again, but... Uh, for one thing for sure, a win here would solidify that. Boy, last night, you and Mark called it. Uh, I tell you, McCook, they needed a win because they, before the Sydney break, the, the holiday, they were playing pretty good basketball, went to Sydney, lost a couple of games up there, lost a couple of games, Broken Bone, Gothenburg, we know how good they are, and just kind of in a funk a little bit, but they needed that win, and Hastings is no slouch. They're pretty good. Yeah, they, uh, again, they, they play so many uh, schools farther to the east, of course, and, and of course, Hastings, they're going to cook everything could handle so again those are the games you like to see kind of in the fourth quarter with order with the win starting lineups i still got about three minutes left you want to go ahead and give the starting lineups yeah we'll give it a try here for uh we'll go uh take the deck let's go we'll skip to uh rosie uh actually rosie nelson a five foot five inch sophomore uh kinsey land a five foot ten inch freshman and then the lone senior peyton weeder is a five foot seven inch senior and then for mccook they're going to go with the same lineup that they had last night and that's of course peyton Doucette, five six senior brooklyn gillen the five six freshman getting her second start ainsley taylor five six senior shauna wilkinson a uh, really nice game last night by the way five seven uh, junior and then sierra kachwar of course the six foot senior folks uh watching on on our kicx youtube channel kicks 96 one youtube channel uh our great engineer kyle delavo i uh, help i don't know why but it's just the way it's built and everything, it's not the best. So it might be a little in our, our radio. Um, glad to bring in both uh, audio and video once again for what's, I think it's going to be two very close games. Yeah, again, it'll be interesting to see how, how, how again, both game, uh, teams respond after last night. McCook playing last night. Uh, again, uh, Minda did not play. They played on Thursday. So, again, they could be a little bit fresher here to start with. But, uh, and then, of course, in the boys' matchup, same type of thing. McCook coming off a double overtime. Again, both games uh, by the end of the boys' game there. So uh, it'll be in a nice crowd here at Minden. So, again, this is, a, again, a quality win for McCook. This is a team they should not be afraid of. Uh, they should, they've played, this team certainly as good as this team. So, again, how they handle the press, limit the turnovers, how they shoot, all the typical things will be very important. All right, got our national anthem. I have a feeling starting lineups. We'll get to all that and the tip off McCook and Minden coming up after the break. It's Bison Basketball and Kicks 96 1.
back here at Menden High School. It was good to see our good buddy Coach John Gum in attendance. Uh, his uh, daughter Erin and uh, family uh, live here in the Minden area. Coach Gum and Aunt Nancy live over in Kearney. And darn it, uh, their grandson is is uh, out with a knee injury right now, Bob, and so we won't get a chance to watch him on the court. But uh, always good to see the one of the all-time great Chicago Bear fans over there. Absolutely. I'm sure he's as depressed as I am with the state of uh, his football franchise. <laughs> <laughs> as we both even play in the same division. so But the Vikings did get the sweep over the Bears this year. so Bison in their road black uniforms and Minden in their home whites. Pretty good. Tip controlled by the Lady Bison. We'll see Peyton Doucette run the point. Shauna Wilkinson in an early foul. We haven't played six seconds and an early blocking foul is going to be called against Rosie Nelson. Yeah, kind of got that one stuck out there as Shauna Wilkinson was making that drive to the basket. So again, uh, didn't take long. Of the season, high post. Sierra Kachwar inside the paint, shot at shorts, rebound backside by Minden. Yeah, a lot of contact there, a lot of white jerseys around there too. Minden having a fine season. They had last week, uh, of course, uh, a nice win against Ravenna and then lost a tough one. Yeah, actually, this is this week, I should, this is their third game of the week. Junior, it's 2 0 whip. Still no good rebound by Oshet. Runs in the road, a little backside by Minden, getting their offense going here a little bit. And uh, Minden turns the ball over. And uh, Coach Taylor Molesby not happy. Uh, game for Cook to get a big win to get them that fourth seed in the Southwest Conference uh, Tournament a week from Monday. Doucette has it corner. Now Gill on top of the circle. Doucette tips, but right to a Minden player. Yeah, again, I think you'll see McCook start to work the middle a little bit more. Sierra Kochwar has a definite size advantage. Whippets with the basketball inside. Jumpers on the way. It's by Peyton Weeder, but the foul is going to be called against uh, McCook. It's going to be a two-shot foul. I think Peyton Doucette's going to pick her first foul. Our first one's on the way, missed by Weeder. She'll get one more. The sub for Coach Malsby as they will bring in number 13, Maddie Camry, who I had as a starter first. Apparently come off the bench for this one. Another young freshman for him. Second free throw is going to be away. Missed them both. Rebounded by Sierra Kochwire. Now it's Deshaunna Wilkinson quickly up court. Now it's Peyton Doucette. Bison trailing it to nothing. Wilkinson, left-handed dribble. Kind of forced a shot block. That time, Kochwire, loose ball, picked it back up, drew the foul. Not for sure. Certain is Sierra was going to put the shot up. She was looking right. to pass, and she was right near the bucket. Yeah, put again, it up. Yeah, towering over everybody there and just decided to go ahead and go straight up. And again, uh, they'll nice get free throws. And we'll say that in the girls' game, and we'll see it in the say it in the bulk here for the quarter. Second free throw. Horizon Bank free throws one and two and one of two. Once again, for Sierra Kochwire. Bison some full court pressure. Beck just barely got the on the bison. Good move. That's by Madras that time it's 4-2 Minden. Yeah, good, uh, great ball move. But again, Sloan Beck broke the press basically by herself there. And it actually splits the defense. They've got numbers. They can push it. Uh, and a little floater inside the lane by Wilkins. And then had, you know, open court for the rest of the way. Nice touch on that little soft shot. Full court press. Coach Child said they do it again tonight in this one. Did it a lot against Hastings last night. Minden breaks the pressure. Ch uh, the thing with that is you break that pressure midcourt and you got a wide open body at the other end. It's 6-3. You are getting foul trouble, anything to start with. So, again, uh, Minden handling the press so much better than Hastings so far. Shauna Wilkinson, that great speed up the uh, middle of the court, gets uh, hammered, a uh, little hip check that time. That'll be 13 foul against the Whippets in the quarter, the first against Madras. Yeah, Priscilla Madras picking up her foul there. And again, uh, Shauna Wilkinson, uh, definitely a quickness factor on her. Emma Dutton in the ball game for the first time for the Lady Bison. Sierra Kochwar takes a break at 6 3. Uh, Men in early lead. Doucette, whip pass backside is Wilkinson. Top of the circle, not a Gillen. Swinging out of Doucette. Baseline runner, Ains Taylor right there, shot it short, put backs on the way, threw it up, missed it, drew the foul. They did a great job of ball movement that time, got Taylor on a wide open shot, just shot it short, followed it, a couple of free throws. Yeah, Ainsley Taylor, really nice game last night too, especially in the first half to keep McCook in it. So again, like you said, good ball movement from one side to the other, and she was open on the baseline. Well, if Rich was halfway smart, I would keep track of points on the scoreboard of Kicks 961 YouTube channel. It's going to take me a lot of time. 6-4 on the Taylor free throw, 6-4 Lady Bison Trail. 4.42 left in this opening first quarter. Whippets with a basketball, break the timeline. Madras, high post, that should be a walk. Yep, took off a little bit too soon that time on the under pass that time to Weeder, and McCook will get it back. Yeah, got her kind of at the elbow there, and again was going to either either pass or shoot and couldn't make up her mind either way and took that extra step. Bison a chance. Madras, down court and throw it wide. 
Uh, no touch. They're looking for a Wilkinson right near the Minden sideline, and it went wide right that time. Just like a Scott Norwood field goal back Ooh, in the day, huh? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, Shauna Wilkinson is, is closer to 5'10 than 6'10, so it would have been tough to reel that one in. Well, was that wide left? Bites to get it back in a over 6'5. Whip its lead. We're approaching the halfway point quarter. Number one, Gillen. Baseline, Wilkinson. Threes on the way for the lead. Missed it. Rebound. Dutton didn't have position. Time rebounded by Minden. Boy, yeah, she's been deep in the corner for both of those three attempts, too. So maybe a foot or two outside her best range. And Wilkinson comes back, got a little close that time for a steal. Going to be called for the personal. That'll be team foul number two against the Lady Bison in the quarter. Yeah, just anticipating the pass there a little bit too much and just, uh, again, couldn't quite get there in time. Madras has it off the inbound, takes a right against Dutton. And, oh, Emma, she got to stand your ground because she, I don't think she was thinking that the defender was going to come right at her. She did, fouled her. That'll be team foul number three. First on Emma Dutton. Yeah, again, it'll be interesting to see how uh, Coach Shiles substitutes players here again to try and keep some fresh legs out there. Tori Hahn in the ball game for the first time spells Brooklyn Dillon. Beck went right down the line on the inbounds pass, missed it, loose ball, and Amber's uh, Matt tried to knock it off at Wilkinson's foot that time. Couldn't do so much. Bison will get it back. And a 6 5 one 2 one, one full pressure and bison threw the ball over again tough passes on the sideline pass wilkinson it was for the most part handled haste pressure pretty good a little bit different twist on things whippets break the timeline well it's eight five players with the bat well, a bucket apiece oh boy. bailout call that time mccook was on the verge maybe a 10 second call and a foul right toward midcourt against madras and that'll be a team foul and that's her second so the bison shooting some free throws in this game really we've got 322 left in the uh, first quarter looks like Maybe it was just the fifth team foul. But Montreux is back in the ball game now for a short break as uh, Dutton will sit. Bison half court game, a little high low. Contra all the way, jumpers on the way short. And recovered out front. Wilkinson run down the loose ball on the Bison resets. Yes, yeah, second, second chance opportunity for the Lady Bison on this one. Bison half court again. Right idea that time. She knew it was open. And uh, once again, got a call for the. First time out taken by either team in the quarter, Bob. 252-8-5. Bison, you know, despite offensive kind of struggles. A uh, little slow start to, uh, for the Bison, but uh, again, uh, pressure is going to help things uh, turn things around, hopefully. Midden breaks the pressure. Left side now, it's Camry. Long three on the way, drilled at first three by hit by either team. As Minden taking a page out of Mark Searcy going downtown with that one. It's 11 5. Wide open, Sierra Cotchware the other way is a flash track of Sierra and uh, a bucket from McCook. It's 11 7. Power failure around uh, this. Uh, see the lights flicker? I think we have some, <laughs> some junior high boys down there being honoring, to be I honest see. with you. <laughs> yeah. Full court pressure applied by McCook again with Beck looking for cutters, and now it's Weeder, but set up their half court. Top of the circle now, it's Camry. Jumper inside the lanes on the way. Hit every part of the rim possible. Camry's got back-to-back -back buckets. 13-7 Minden. Yeah, nice touch there. Drove the lane and just was able to lay it up over the uh, Lady Bison. Do set and backcourt double team and then come back. Again, Lady Bison having a little more trouble with the Minden's pressure than last night with Hastings. Bench is going to be key. Uh, we'll see. Uh, Bison go back to their uh, bench. And uh, Joy Rippon will check in. Ainsley Taylor will set. So we'll We'll even do set in there with the two fouls. Coach Rochelle going to trust her in there. Off the inbounds. Point. Again, they've just shot the ball so well. I mean, Cook's pressure has been effective, but when Minden's broken it, they, uh, again, shot the ball quite well. Again, five different players scored for them already in the quarter. Rippon will exit, and it'll be Brooklyn Gillen checking back in. Both teams, the team fouls at five apiece. As Rippon's free throws on the way, missed it. Rebound, offensive put back. Camry's on the way, drew the foul. Bison not checking off on, on a free throw that time, and they, it's going to be a couple of more free throws. Camera for the free throw line for a two-shot foul. Yeah, too many opportunities. Minden on the verge of a 20-point quarter here. And again, the first quarter, Bison trailing by 9, 16, 7. Second free throw is on the way and good. Gosh, i got to keep track of my scoreboard here. Golly, seven, six. Uh, did she make that? Yes. Seven, seven should be one. set by uh, Kochwar. Open. Jumper off the glass. Much needed bucket from a cook right there on a Kochwar bucket. It's 16-9. Rosie Nelson off the dribble across the timeline right to left in the offense. Bison 
Back to the 2-3 zone. Look, Nelson picked up her dribble. Cross score, skip pass now to Bullis. Goes baseline to Beck. Fake the three, jumper on the lane, good. Nice shot, little ball fake, little shot fake. Away, Han, Gillen right side now. Doucette, three is going to be off the mark. Rebound, went over Kochwar. Gillen fighting. And with about a minute left, shade under a minute, we'll see Coach Shaw go to her bench, and Kennedy Walter will check in. Doucette will uh, exit with the two fouls. Yeah, really slow start shooting-wise for McCook. And again, Minden's pressure has had something to do with that. Whippets have a back. Camry has been key off the bench for them. Scoring ball handle, handling. Freshman guard, 5'9 freshman guard. Beck has it. Camry. Nelson has it. A little double team. A tie-up as Tori Hahn got a hand in there. The tie-up, McCook will get it back. Should go back to McCook. Yeah, nice. Again, you're just on the ball basically at waist level there. And Tori Hahn just says, fine, I'll go ahead and tie you up. And Brooklyn gets Gillen has it right side, left hand a dribble out front. Now it's uh, still looking, still looking, still looking. Got a five second count on. Now it's Kennedy Walter. Gillen far side now, left side. I he sets over and back. Yep, a little backcourt violation as uh, Beck hadn't cleared him close that time. And the turnover going back to McCook. 15 seconds clock. Oh my gosh, RB made the trip. <laughs> Wrestling all day at Oberlin, a little basketball tonight. 18 seconds left, buys to play for a final shot. Doucette back in there. Now Gillen, baseline now to Kennedy Walter. Out front and a hop. Doucette with three, with two. Wilkinson bombs one from three. No good. That's your quarter. 18-9 Minden. Quarter number two from Minden's coming up after the break. It's Bison basketball kicks 96-1. First quarter, Bob, 18-9 Whippets. Yeah, slow start for the Lady Bison here. Minden's pressure has been effective so far. They've also shot the ball very, very well. Uh, certainly have to be better than 50% so far in this game. So, again, Lady Bison going to have to try and turn up the pressure a little bit more and knock a few more shots down. Almost a five-second count as Kennedy out front. Now it's Madras off the dribble. Free throw line knocked away by Doucette. Loose ball picked up by Peyton in a turnover. Yeah, again, just one-on-one -on -one move there, and Peyton Doucette won that battle. Bison half court needs something going right now. And Walter baseline, boy, some contact. And they're going to say it just went, oh, or did he get the foul? No, he's just going to say, no, they're just going to, yeah. Hockey rules apply. Well, I again, I mean, and, and if they're going to call that, then, I mean, she didn't need, nobody touched the ball. Yeah. Tri City Storm down the line, right down the way here. <laughs> Long three missed, and a little ball picked up by Brooklyn Gillen. Brooklyn trying to get a shot, and the foul is going to be called against uh, Beck, I do believe. It'll be a two shot foul for the from Brooklyn Gillen. Yeah, Madras kind of got her legs tangled there a little bit, and then Kenny uh, Brooklyn Gillen was able to get the steal there. So again, uh, we'll take it. Need to get off to a better start this quarter than last. Horizon big free throws coming up for Brooklyn Gillen. Had, I think, six, point, six points last night in her debut? Yep, had two. That'll be calls for grounding for a week from Dad. How many laps are we going to run after? Exactly <laughs> right. On will sit, and Taylor checked back in, so it's due set. Taylor, Wilkinson, Gillen, and Walter, you're five in there right now. Pretty short lineup for McCook, actually. Quick lineup, though, not yeah, bad. Yeah, exactly. Free throws on the way. Bias can hit free throws. Again, missed free throw. Camry with the rebound. Here comes uh, one and Minden. Try to get that double digit lead back across the timeline. And baseline, Matt, or Nelson. Uh, actually, it's Madras to the bucket. Uh, threw one up and it went in. It's 20 to 9 Whippets. Yeah, she's really been effective breaking the points. Do set in backcourt. Now it's Ainsley Taylor. Court. Yeah, I gotta figure out a better way to break that press, man. Those those sideline passes have been tough. Wilkinson now 20 to 9 whippets, the biggest lead of the game. We played a minute. Walter, Shana trying to drive baseline. Play some lane. Sometimes you gotta find a cut and, and try to find a lane somehow. Has Bison really been forced out of her comfort zone. Right, no. Works pretty well lately, but that time, boy, nothing but white jerseys around. And and here's another one of those sideline passes oh, again. Oh, it's just uh, keep the ball as much in the middle of the court as you can to have all those options. And again, these side passes, I mean, we're, we're talking a pretty narrow window to, uh, to get that ball. As we'll see Joy Rippon check back. Nine. Lead passes. Minden breaks the pressure. That gets pretty good guards. That's for back. Baseline. 
Skip pass inside. Up in the ball is moving too. I mean, they're all cycling and cycling and cycling. Six minutes left. She's got that one. Corey Hahn will check back in. Kennedy Walter will sit. Going to trust two of them. Madras missed the first one. Though she'll get one more. 22 9. Um, watch my score. Sorry. Between uh, big beams. Here. Exactly. Yeah, some thick beams up here up top. And your shot. Yeah, again, textbook way to break the press. And again, Sierra's just got a late. Men in the other way. Madras out front. Weeder. 22 9. All men in so far. Bison haven't scored in the quarter. Cameron, a little crossover. The lob jumper up missed by. Or so, But yeah, again, the very young team here for Minden. First free throw is going to be on the way and good. Eight fouls against the Lady Bison in the, in the half. We'll see Wilkinson drive like that. Just kind of that soft little runner through the lane. And again, she's had a really nice touch on both of those. She had went out. And uh, also Rosie Nelson will check back in as well. 18 fouls apiece. And the old-fashioned three-point play into the right. Free throw once again for Shauna Wilkinson's on the way and good. That cuts it down to nine, 23 14. And Maddie Camry will bring the ball up across the timeline. Minden Whippets. Free throw line, dumps it off backside. Buellis and looking inside, threw the ball away. Go get that one. 23 14. Bice to get it back. Inbounds pass Ainsley Taylor for a white shirt. Now top of the circle now it's Buellis. As Camry inside the lane kind of kicked it right to a teammate and then recovered by Land. Stepped out of bounds going back to McCook. Yep, foot on the sideline there, the official right there to call. So again, you know, uh, again, Bison really just tough luck from shooting from three-point land so far. But boy, a couple of those would uh, get us right back in this one. Brooklyn Gillen back at the ball game. Back to the 1 2 1 1 full court pressure applied by Minnan. Get the trapping game applied. Taylor, far side, almost stolen. It did go off of Wilkinson this year. It's a little pressure uh, to uh, Minnan players in the far side, and she was the last one to touch it. Yeah, again, uh, uh, compliments to Minnan. They've been really effective on this press. You know, it's not as if the Lady Bison haven't seen or had a good team. Weeder has it left side. This is here comes Minden the other way. Bison have cut this thing down 23-16 at the three-minute mark here before the half. Top of the circle now. It's Camry. Weeder has the left side. They post up Land on the low block, and she got caught on the low block against Cotchwire. Oh, my gosh. That, that would have knocked over a stuffed animal. I mean, that was just in, and again. <laughs> I thought she, I thought she was going to get called for the walk, to be honest with you. If, if you're going to call that contact, then, then yeah. we're not going to go 10 seconds without anything. Wow. I mean. Benin's pretty much led from the start. Lead's been, I think, biggestly 13. It's down. It's at eight right now. Second free throw's on the way and in and out. Uh, Minden had inside position or got the inside position. And they're going to say it went off of Wilkinson on a bounce last. And we'll go back to McCook with 2.53 left. Both teams bonus situation. Next foul against Minden puts McCook in the, in the two shot foul. Back off the inbounds. Clear cross court. Open three. Rosie Nelson. Boy, their guards are not ones you want to just give a good look at. Knocks home a three. Yeah, they just, again, the, the difference in the game is uh, that's their third three-pointer. McCook, of course, with none. Wilkinson breaks the pressure, and the foul is going to be called as uh, Minden players trying to catch up uh, against the whip. It's going to be team foul number nine and put uh, Wilkinson back at the free throw line for a one-on-one. -on -one. Sloan Beck going to get called for that foul again. Just contact right in Shauna Wilkinson pretty hard. 2.37 left in before the half. First to two here from Minden High School. Uh, next one could be a pretty interesting one as well. The Bison boys looking for a big win again. Coming off the big double overtime win against Hastings last night. Wilkinson, Horizon Bank free throw number one is good. She'll get one more. Emma Denton will check back in for Sierra Kochwire. Second free throw is going to be on the way and good. 27-18 after the two free throws. And here we go. Minden back in the half court. Bison get a good stop here. Get this thing. It's at nine. Get it maybe down to five or, or six by the, by the end of the half. Feeling good about themselves going to halftime locker room. Back of the high post. Nelson. And they are still again. Boy, Peyton Doucette has really done a good job uh, at times here in the first half of timing that pass. And just about had another pick on the far side. As Bob is leaning to his left to look <laughs> around the big uh, uh, beam here in front of him. Good thing that uh, long cord on that, uh, that headset. That's right. 
27-18, Minden back in the half court set. Nelson has the top of the circle, Beck. Backside Madras, a little step through. Bison got caught flat foot and missed the shot. Got a break there, Wilkinson the other way. Boy, that was one quick move by her too. Bison, very fortunate that didn't go in. Wilkinson's runner inside the lanes on the way and good, but Coach Malsby wanted an offensive foul and didn't get it, and it's 27-20. I don't know, man, a lot of whistle swallowing going on around here, wow. <laughs> Minute 48 left, Bison had drawn within seven. Madras has it against the Bison zone. Beck stepped in, uh, double team kick out. Camry baseline jumper is good again. Contested shot uh, as well. Maddie Camry makes it a nine point game again. Yeah, again, I'm just impressed with their shooting. I mean, it's just, again, the players in their face, they're still knocking down shots so far. 90 seconds left in the half. Brooklyn Gillen has it. Ah, bad pass picked up by Camry. Brooklyn trying to get a steal back, a little crossover, throws one up, and it went in. Can you believe that one? Going to her left, throws it up with the right hand, and it went in. Yeah, I mean, again, there's nice body control there, but again, yeah, it's a bad pass there by Lady Bison to give them that easy basket. Coming up with one minute left, we got a, uh, a foul out front. It's going to be called, I think, against Nelson. That will put uh, Peyton Ducet at the free throw line for a two-shot foul. Yes, it, two. Yeah, yep. again, yeah, just Rosie Nelson got that leg stuck out there. And again, Peyton Ducet, good, quick first step. Horizon make free throws coming up. 31-20, free throws on the way and good, 31-21. One more for the senior. Second free throw is on the way and missed it too strong. Oh, I hit the back side there and went up and came straight down. So don't talk too quickly, Rich. Yep, I gave up on that one really quick. 31-22 <laughs> on the two Horizon Bank free throws. And Minden a chance once again right here. Beck stepped through. Boy, a little bunny hop inside the lane. Looked like on one foot. Off the glass and good, 33-22. Uh, two points of the quarter, but again, Minden just, again, shooting percentage-wise has just been really effective. Boy, McCook here, you're thinking, McCook, we can't afford to give up 30-some points and a half. And looking inside, Taylor, go looking inside for Dutton and Bexley. Uh, again, anticipation is good. Their execution has been very good so far. They don't look like they would dazzle you, but they've just been very efficient so far in this first half. Whippet's going to milk this thing down a little bit. Madras has it between the circles, picked up by Brooklyn Gillen out front. Now it's Camry. And the McCook will come out and put a little pressure. 14 seconds left. 33-22, Minden by 11. Late second quarter. Camry, seven with six. Madras, baseline. Nelson bombs a three. Baseline's going to be short. Rebound, and that's a half. It's Minden 33, McCook 22 at the halftime break. Bob and I will... Take a break, and we'll talk about it here after the break. You're listening to Bison Basketball on Kicks 96-1.
Halftime here from Minden, Nebraska. Minden up 33-22 in the girls' game. Rich Barnett, Bob Golke, and Bob, it probably could have been worse. McCook did a good job of climbing back. They were down 13 at one time. The offense couldn't get going. We got we had picked up some steals. They got the offense going at 11. I think we're not in too bad a shape right now. No, it, yeah, again, could have been worse, could have been better, too. Again, with a few more shots. Minden, I, I, I'll go ahead and make this prediction. They can't shoot that good <laughs> in the second half. So if the Lady Bison can just hang in there. But again, 33-22 uh, at halftime here. Uh, and the Lady Bison have struggled with Minden's pressure. And I don't know if, if it's part of it is maybe, again, a little tired legs from last night. And, of course, Minden had the night off. But, uh, again, their pressure has been really, really tough. And, again, uh, Minden, gosh, I mean, uh, very balanced scoring here for the first half. Uh, uh, Priscilla Madras had four. Uh, Maddie Camry with nine, Sloan Beck with six, Kenzie Land with eight, and Peyton Weeder, uh, or I said Kenzie Land with six, Rosie Nelson with eight. So, I mean, again, five players for, uh, for Minden uh, really sharing the, the scoring here, very balanced. And again, for McCook, uh, Peyton Doucette, uh, slow start for her, didn't have anything in the first quarter, did pick up four points in the second quarter. Uh, Ainsley Taylor only with two in the first half. Shauna Wilkinson keeping them in the game with 13 in the first half. And then Sierra Koshwar, I think she would have more opportunities and did have a few more down low. She only had three. So Bison outscored in the second quarter, 15 to 13. So again, played them pretty much heads up there, but they're still trying to overcome that slow start in the first quarter. Got to pick things up a little bit more on the offense and, and, and you know, got to shut those shooters down for Minden in the second half, don't yeah, they? Yeah, again, I mean, but Madras, to her credit, has been really nice driving the lane. They've had some nice kickout opportunities. And, again, I, I just it, – it's – their shooting has been really impressive yeah. so far, but but again, their pressure has also turned up uh, turned up uh, points for them on the defensive side too. Halftime 33-22. We'll take a break. Bob and I are back with the second half coming up in just a little bit. You're listening to Bison Basketball on Kicks 96.1, HighPlainsRadio.net, or KICXF, and our Kicks 96.1 YouTube channel.
Back here at Minden High School on Kicks 96.1 Saturday Night Bison Basketball. Don't forget, next week got a busy schedule. <laughs> we got a monster schedule coming up for you. Tuesday night, uh, Bob and, and Mark will be making their way over to Lexington. Uh, the Minute Maids, the Minute Men against the Bison Girls and Boys. Tuesday night, Mark makes his way over to Bankelman for Cambridge, Dundee County, Stratton on the Hawk. You and I will be up at North Platte, the Bulldogs and the Bison for North Platte High. And then on Saturday, all three of us uh, will, after Bob gets done refereeing Mac Attack basketball, maybe later on that evening, possibly, if he's not. If not in traction. Exactly right. From all those basketball games, but Mark and I will be down at uh, Southwest High for the RPAC Conference East first round six-game marathon on Saturday. So, and that'll be on 103.9 The Hawk. What are we thinking? <laughs> Gee. Hey, you know, you know, Sydney got you warmed up. We did uh, whatever. We did four, four of them in, Sydney, yeah. in a day in Sydney there at yeah. the Chase County game. So, yeah, yeah. Here we go. Ready for basketball. Bison with the ball first trailing 33-22. Baseline jumper. Long range jumper. Brooklyn Gillen lights it up from three. And her first points, I do believe, and it's 33-25. Actually, they just they give her a three. Yes, they did. A shove of the freshman bombs a three from way downtown that time. Minden in the half court. See the Bison defense can really get with the program here. Peyton Weeder lob inside. Nice job. You set nearly had oh no foul. Oh, you know, she got a tie up. Boy, it looked like she could have been called for number four there easily. Yeah, that was a re I mean reaching in and then of course got the arms tied yeah. up. And again, I I'm, I'm not so sure that both refs would agreed with that call, but we got the right one to, to get the actual signal. Madras inbounds back. Madras gets it right back. A little high screen. Inside, might have got it with a little uh, extra step, but that doesn't matter. Bison get the ball back in a turnover. Yeah, again, that time she did not have anyone to throw it to. So, again, Sierra Kotchwar with the good hands. Bison got it down to, to eight. It's a little bit more now. They lob it in Kotchwar. Drop step, jumper from five off the glass, and good. Bison scored five opening points in the third quarter, 33 27. Yeah, again, Rich, not to uh, beat a dead horse, but I mean, that, that's something I think that the Bison are going to do much more of in this second half. I mean, Sierra has a definite size advantage. And a near steal by Doucette, far side, just about end, had another pick. Uh, Bison defense stepping it up. I'm sure Coach Schaus had some words of wisdom in the halftime locker room. Well, again, I mean, you got to come out and you got to try and turn up the pressure on these guys and, and kind of flip the old script, as they say. So, again, nice start by Brooklyn Gillen. Let's hope it continues. Back home run pass down court. Good catch over uh, Taylor. Jumpers on the way by Nelson. Missed it. Here comes McCook. Yeah, again, just enough of a catch up by uh, Ainsley Taylor to force that shot off. Tough pass inside to set against the traffic that time. We have another jump ball. McCook's going to get it right back. Yeah, again, tough pass there. I mean, too many players around trying to force that. And just in a way, early third quarter, 33. Has cut it to six out front. Doucette got a good look at a three on the way. Buried it. McCook with an 8-0 run to begin things. It's 33-30. Just the start you wanted. Yeah, Coach Shell says, hey, you want to make that trip to Ainsworth the week from Monday? Keep playing. <laughs> You're playing. And they maybe got the hint there. It's 33-30. Mind into the half court. See the Bison defense keep doing what they're doing here early. Madras. Right side now it's Roxy Nelson. Razi Nelson will get the long three. It's on the way. Save. Nope. Out of bounds. Back to McCook. And, and give me time. I'm probably going to say Ozzy Nelson. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, I said Rosie, but yeah, Rosie. Yeah, you're right. I mean, that probably is actually the right. Well, it might be Rosie. It's R O C I E. It's probably Rosie. Yeah. 33 30. Three point game. Bison cut it. Uh, oh, and Brooklyn Gillen stepped back. She sure did. Took that extra step. Didn't mean to. Turnover going back to Minden. Yeah, nice start, though. 8-0 run to start this uh, third quarter for the Lady Bison. Just got to keep playing solid on defense now here. Off the inbounds, Madras. Corbers on the way, misses short. The Bison go off to reward, rebound, put back, block shot. And here comes Doucette the other way. Wants to run, taking it coast to coast. Lamps on the way and good. It's a one-point game, 33-32 and a 10-0 run. Coach Molesby, I think, wants a timeout, but he's not getting it right now. Or maybe you get across midcourt, then call your timeout. Nope, he sure didn't. Inside, great look. Good catch against traffic, and a blown layup that time by Land. Had position, and here comes McCook, a chance to take the first lead for a long time, Bob. Just amazing. Yeah, great defense by Lady Bison. The referees are not calling a lot right now. It is a one-point game. To update my... YouTube channel scoreboard, sorry about that. Uh, Gillen dumps it off for Wilkinson, bombs a three, he's on the way, missed it. High rebound up for it is Minden. 
And by Kenzie Land, it's knocked out of, out of her hands. Could be off McCook and go back to Minden. So all of a sudden, Minden can't hit shots and, and, and can't get second or third chances. Yeah, again, Lady Bison just uh, playing so their typical solid defense here on the press. And it's just, uh, again, maybe my prediction's true. They can't shoot that good in the two halves. Ambrose dumps it off baseline to land. Uh, couldn't quite catch in the uh, spot for a, a shot. Long three is going to be on the way. Missed. Beck, the rebound. Put backs on the way. Missed it. Rebound tipped. Contour kind of tipped it right to do set. And here comes McCook again with a chance to take the lead. Boy, two chances right down there, too. And again, Lady Bison just playing good defense. Taylor Wilkinson. And I think, yeah, the pass from Taylor got tipped. And Wilkinson had to kind of chase it and didn't put the ball down and quick enough that time, apparently. It was back to men on the turnover. Yeah, he kind of had three people in a phone booth there trying to make room for <laughs> each other and uh, again not enough there for Shauna to uh, get the ball on the floor. Land across the near sideline and tipped and it's out of bounds off Brooklyn Gillen. Last we'll go back to Minden underneath with a 445 left. We haven't had a foul call in this game yet or in this I, second third I, quarter. I, I don't even think they have them in their mouths. I mean <laughs> they're not even using them out there. So <laughs> Hope the inbounds baseline uh, almost got that three attempt from Camry. They're working on right side of Madras. Top of the circle now. It's back at the high post. Madras trying to get that open three. They had some shots there from Madras in that first half. Far side, Nelson. Now Madras against the Bison zone. High post, Beck, free throw line. Madras going to take a right spot. Found a little seam there and took it right out. It's going to be a foul at, at, on the floor. Um, and, oh, they're going to call a two-shot foul. Okay. Anyway, to Sierra Contour picks up the personal. That'll be her second and team foul. Just the first against McCook in the half. Yeah, Madras, when she makes up her mind, she has a very nice quick first step there. And she, again, I mean, got Sierra Contour, unfortunately, just reaching. Free throw is going to be on the way. Missed it. Nothing for Minden falling in the first uh, almost of the third quarter. Joy Rippin, Emma Dutton will check back in. Brooklyn Gillen, Sierra Kochwire will sit. Well, and again, this is talk about what you wanted. I mean, you know, shut them out here for the you know basically half of the quarter while you work your way back into it. So, again, good comeback by the Lady Bison. Missed another one. Rick, that one pretty badly. Minden still over for the quarter. Wilkinson quickly up court. Peyton Doucette, 33-32. Minden by one at almost the halfway point. Taylor, now it's uh, out front out of Wilkinson. Joy Rippin. Out front, it's a high screen from Dutton. Baseline out of Taylor. Ainsley looking now top of the circle. Now to uh, Peyton Doucette. Good move inside. Jumpers in the lane. Missed it. Rebound, Taylor. Second chance on. Ainsley got it swiped away. On a play by Camry that time. Quickly up court. Finds a wide open jumper runner inside the lane by Nelson. And it's a three-point minute lead. First points of the half for him. Again, that's the first time they really were able to break the press. Bison get uh, as Emma Dutton that time. I think she would have turned around. There's no there's nobody to the baseline. Basket. Go to the baseline. Baseline. There was nobody there. It's 35-32. Bison half court game. 3:30 left in the quarter. Trailing by three. Tains, uh, Taylor high post now to Dutton and a and a reach going to be called against Minden. And there is the second, actually the first team foul against the Whippets in the quarter. Yeah, again Emma Dutton at the elbow there, and again a lot of traffic, but again just a lot of arms reaching in there. As Minden will go to their bench, and Weeder checks back in, and Nelson will sit. Yeah, third foul for her. Inbounds right down the lane. Peyton Doucette, jumpers on the way. Chance the old-fashioned three-point play. Went right down the lane, took it right at, and knew what she was doing. 35-34 and a chance to tie it up with a Horizon Bank free throw right here. But first of all, timeout on the floor by Minden. Going to be a full timeout. We're back in one minute next. It's by some basketball on Kicks 96-1.
Rich and Bob back here at Min and Bob, 35-34. Do set free throw, ties it up here. Yeah, again, great quarter by McCook. Uh, uh, had a chance to kind of observe uh, that last time out. And he just, let me just say he gave a very inspired <laughs> message to his team. <laughs> I'm no lip reader, but uh, I mean, he was getting after him pretty good. So Jeez. he's not happy with this quarter. Doucette missed the free throw, but it was out of bounds off Min and last of the Bison retain off the inbounds. Ripping, good looking at three, baseline, in and out. Boy, had a good look and it rimmed in and out. Back on the rebound for Minden. Good pressure by Doucette, far side. She has been a pain in their guards. But, uh, and then, uh, oh, they have an offensive foul, I think. Now stepped on the line. She stepped out of bounds. Boy, collision big time. <laughs> and, and I would call it was just out of bounds. I yeah, I'm, I mean, I'm just stunned. I mean, is, again, it's been pretty rugged third quarter. Again, only three fouls called total. But, uh, oof. 30, Bison get a break. 35-34. McCook gets a uh, Wilkinson three for the lead. In and out. Recovered by Beck. Inside for Menden. Quickly surrounded by two black shirts. And the foul is going to be called against McCook. And it's going to be called against Tori Hahn. And that'll be the, just the second team foul against McCook in the quarter. Yeah, Shauna Wilkinson, man, she's had five or six really good looks from three and just cannot get one to go yet. 2.52 in the third, 35-34, Minden by one still. Camry has it, still backcourt across the timeline to Beck. And then nice job by Rippin shutting her off in the baseline. We're going to baseline and a steal by Doucette. Another steal, Peyton coast to coast. A little pump fake off the follow, missed it, drew the foul. Nice job, Peyton Doucette with a steal. Missed it, followed her shot, couple of free throws right here. Yeah, again, it's just amazing the turnaround in this quarter. for I mean, Lady Bison, clearly the dominant team here. And again, Peyton, you said another chance to tie it up or put the Bison in the lead. A couple of more Horizon Bank free throws, and that's the fourth foul against Kenzie Land. Third team foul, free throws on the way and rolls in. Bison have tied the ball game up at 35 apiece. It'll be Rosie. It is Rosie Nelson. I tried to get her to be Rosie, but uh, not the case. Uh, she'll uh, check back in. Also, I think Weeder checked back in as well. Bison a chance to take the lead first time in a long time. Free throws short, and Weeder on the rebound. And here comes, uh, once again, Minden with a chance to get the lead right back. Back and back where Bison guards, given pressure, far side. Back, tough pass, almost backcourt, wasn't though, and Minden has it. Weeder chucks the three right side, missed it, backside rebound. Haunt had position that time, because they uh, no call and picked up loose ball by Peyton Doucette and timeout. Coach Amy keep possession that time, 208 left, in, and is it a full or a 30? 30, 30, 30. We'll keep it right here, but... Uh, Oh boy, they're they are officials letting them play. Wow, yeah. <laughs> it really it's it's pretty rugged out there. It's not one for the faint of heart. But again, gosh, I mean, great comeback by the Lady Boston. You know, th this is one of these games now, and, and now you're down to basically you know ten minutes worth of basketball to decide the winner here. So again, great comeback by them. And, and again, Rich. Minden does not look like the same team. I mean, they're right. much more hesitant, not quite as sure of themselves. And, and again, they, there's just no way they could shoot the ball as good as they did in the first half. So they're looking for some answers right now. Lady Bison got to keep their foot on the gas. 13-2 advantage McCook in the third quarter, giving up just the one bucket. And uh, it's a 35-35 ball game at 208 left. Bison inbounds. After the timeout, got to move. Five second counts on. Rippin just barely got it in. Wilkinson turns around and caught for the walk. Yeah, she, I think she did. I missed that play. Sorry, you people. Missed that play up court, but she turned around and didn't notice the defender right there. Yeah, Sloan Beck was right there in her path. And again, that's one of those ones you just need, need awareness. Again, before you go up the sideline like that. So Minden gets the ball back. Sierra Kochwar back in the ball game. 35. Bison want to get this one in the worst way. Get a four seed in the upcoming Southwest Conference Tournament. A little high-low effect that time. And Kenzie Land jumpers on the way and good. It's 37-35. Boy, look out for that lady. She is dangerous. Do not <laughs> let her in the building, Cindy Pohl. That's uh, she, for sure. She had some very important comments for us here, Rich. She's actually still the YouTube thing is really having a hard time uh, yeah. as far as uh, yeah. it's a little choppy keep, tonight. Keeping up, yeah. Yeah, so. we, we are in, a, in an area where the internet is not the greatest, so we apologize about that. 37-35, minute 41 left. Lob inside land, good catch off the glass, and good. It's 39-35, four straight for the Whippets. Wilkinson in backcourt, and she gets uh, fouled. And Beck, I think, is going to be called for the personal. That'll be team foul number three. Team foul number three. And Bison will get it right back. 
Off the inbounds. Double team Han. Got double team. Got it right back. Loose ball picked up by Beck. Almost him. It's Doucette trying to get on the steal. By gosh, she got it right back. By to get it back with a minute 13 left. Trailing by four. Out front out of Doucette. Peyton has the top of the circle. Tori Hahn. Lost the handle. Here comes uh, Minden. They had a pass tipped. Wilkinson possibly. Um, loose ball. Going to call a jump ball maybe. And uh, finally do a jump ball. Possession arrow back to Minden. That's got a little ugly here the last uh, Yeah, I mean, I, but again, you can't stick your leg out, have the player, and it, it has to be something. <laughs> I mean. Whippets get it back in midcourt with a four-point lead. 55 seconds left on the clock. Camry has it out front. Madras. Beck has it free throw line. Backside Camry. Jumper baseline's on the way. Missed the backside rebound. Put backs on the way. Rolls off on the Kinsey land. Put back and it'll be a two-shot foul for the Whippets. Yeah, you know, Lady Bison again worked so hard to get this thing tied up again that again a little bit of a lull here now as Minden is kind of finding their legs a little bit more in this third quarter. Third foul on Sierra Cotchwar too, by the way. Three team fouls apiece. Free throws on the way and good. Kinsey Land, they got a couple of good freshmen in Camry and also Land, a couple of freshmen's good size and a pretty good ability, 40-35. So it's, since McCook, you know, it was a 13-2 start, now five straight. Once again for the Whippets and make it uh, still five straight. Missed the second free throw. Contrar on the rebound. And here comes Wilkinson. Good possession. Still have a chance. Cut it down uh, three, maybe two at the quarter. Wilkinson trying to drive. Kind of lost the handle. Got it right back. Shauna looking. Out front now. set with 27 on the clock. Pull up jumper. 16 footer off the glass. Missed it. Hahn trying to keep it alive. And boy, a lot of bodies going. They're going to say it went off of Minden uh, <laughs> out of bounds. Hahn might have got a two uh and got away with that one. Yeah, exactly. I mean, <laughs> uh, uh, Minden people in front of us uh, not happy, and I don't blame them. I mean, again, that, that, that <laughs> two-handed push and, and no back. Ainsley Taylor lobbing inside to Kochwar. Sierra drop step, missed the shot. Shot it too strong in the rebound. Yeah, I think Sloan Beck got a hand on that too, and then kind of forced that ball hard against the backboard. Minden the other way with a chance to put some points to the board with a five-point lead. Beck has it, free throw line. In the lane, off the glass, missed it. Miller has it. And that's your quarter right there. After three, it is McCook uh, trailing 40 to 35. Third quarter is coming up here shortly on Kicks 96-1. Richard Bob back here at Minden. Third quarter stats brought to you by McCook Clinic. Uh, Bob, it was all McCook early, and then Minden have a little flurry toward the end of the quarter. Yeah, again, uh, McCook outscored Minden 13-7 in the quarter. So, again, and, and we would have taken this at the end of the quarter. You would have taken, but, I mean, McCook actually had a tie at 35. Yeah. And, and, again, have lost the last five in a row here now. Uh, for Minden and McCook will get the ball to start the fourth quarter. But, yeah, impressed with the way they came back in that third quarter. And, again, let's see if we can kind of sneak up on them here in the fourth. Early fourth quarter. Here we go. Bison uh, need this one. Love to get this one on the road. 40-35. Doucette has Kochwar and Taylor. The original starting five were out there to begin the quarter. Inside Kochwar. Good catch against traffic. On the way. Missed it. Drew the foul. Sierra Kochwar to the free throw line for a couple of more Horizon Bank free throws. Yeah, Lady Bison, again, have tried to win. Uh, Got to make some free throws here, though. She's had... Fourth team foul, or, uh, yeah, fourth team foul against Minden. Free throw missed. Getting another one. 40 35 early. First of two of the boys matchup uh, coming up after we're done. Second free throw, missed them both. And back on the rebound. Minden the other way with Camry. Beck, Madras, Land, and also Nelson, your five out there right now. And a five-point whip and lead, 40-35. Nelson has it right side. Top of the circle, uh, circle out of Madras. Camry trying to go baseline. Forcing a baseline. Great pass inside and a wide open 
Uh, Rodzi Nelson that time. It's on the wing good at 42-35. Well, that was great ball movement. Again, two Bison players left to defense. And again, found the open player for the easy layup. Rodzi Nelson once again with a big bucket. Koch, or uh, Wilkinson through her traffic. Weaves away through. Jumper inside the lanes on the way. Rolls in. Tough move. Shot at Wilkinson. Makes it a 42-37. to Five-point game still. Still early once again, fourth quarter here from Minden High School. Kicks 96.1, highplanesradio.net, the KICXF, and our Kicks 96.1 YouTube channel. Beck down the lane, runners on the way and good. It's 44-37. Boy, yeah, I hate to give up those easy layups there. And again, Minden kind of responded now since once McCook tied it up. Wilkinson has it up front. Bison on the road, black uniform, trim with red. Now it's Gillen top of the circle. Peyton Doucette. Dempson off baseline, Wilkinson three, it's going to be short. Now I'm sure that legs fatigue a little bit. Beck on the, the rebound, outlet pass down court, easy layup, Bison didn't get back, and Nelson with easy layup makes it a nine-point game. Yeah, again, tough turnaround for the Bison there, and again, it's starting to look like they might be running out of gas a little. 46-37, Wilkinson off the dribble, the block's going to be called against uh, Minden. That's team foul number five against the Whippets. We'll see Tori Hahn checking back in the scorer's table here shortly. And along with Emma, 46-37. As Wilkinson will get a brief break, I'm sure it would be very, very brief, and Kochmer uh, will check it as well. Yeah, again, going to have to work really hard. Now all of a sudden it's a nine-point deficit. Doucette skip pass cross court. Gillen and picked Beck picked it to right near the Bison bench. Camry or Land uh, through the hole and too many easy buckets given up from a cook here in the first couple of minutes, Bob, of this fourth quarter. Yeah, again, that was just like you'll split the defense and just nice comeback by Minden. Just like that, 48 37. Take a break. We're back to Minden coming up here shortly on Kicks 96 1. Rich and Bob back here at Minden. Bob, got to have a run. I know a lot of time left, 535. Again, Minden, another turnover. Leads to another layup. I mean, it's just layup after layup, and another layup this time. I think that was uh, Cameron who got it that time. Yeah, again, the pressure is good enough. Bison just not. And a run, a 10-2 run here in the fourth quarter. Yeah, exactly. No, I mean, it was uh, tied to 35, and now again, uh, Minden basically, uh, you know, 15-2 to two run, yeah. actually. So, again, they've uh, put the distance out there again. As Wilkinson uh, checked back, back in the game, I knew it was going to be long. Quick catch and shoot three is going to be on the way. Sinks that one right left side, right side win that time. Makes it a 50 to 40 uh, ball game right there. Definitely do. Love a few more of those. Bison got to get better defensively. Have given up too many sh easy shots here as of late. 50 40 ball game. Whippets the half court. Skip pass backside. Now it's Camry. Jumper inside the lane. Missed it. Drew the foul. Emma Dutton's going to be called for the personal. Yeah, two shot foul for Maddie Camry. Yeah, again, all of a sudden, Minden just they found their mojo once again. And it's just funny in that third quarter, it's like they couldn't do anything right. Now all of a sudden, it's just they're back to the nice, crisp passes, handling the ball well, and able to break, uh, break the Bison pressure. A couple of free throws coming up. Fifth, actually, fourth team foul against the Lady Bison. Free throw's going to be on the way and missed that one. After the ball game's over, of course, we'll find a post game, wrap things up. We'll have conversations with both the coaches on the boys' side. 
actually assistant coach Zach Weezer who joined us in our coaches coffee club. We'll hear from Zach in case you missed his conversation with me this morning. We'll talk to him and also head coach uh, Carson Bloom, first year coach at Minden. One of two at the free throw line at 51 to 40. Bison got to get the offense going and that's not going to cut it. High pass Wilkinson sailed over the head of, of uh, Gillen and out of bounds back to Minden. Yeah, again, just uh, really tough on back-to-back -back nights here. And again, you expend so much energy in that third quarter getting things tied up. And again, they're paying the price a little bit here now. Back inbounds pass. Right back. Nelson crossed the timeline. Now Madras. Bison got to get out of the zone sometime uh, because they're, they're uh, it's still four and a half minutes left, but uh, it's a double-digit lead right now, 11. Madras out front now, it's Camry. Now Nelson. Bison guard times trying to get some steals when they can. Back high post, backside look. Camry stuck in backside all. Everything kind of slid up that time, Bob. We forgot the backside is 53 40. Yeah, again, just too easy there. But again, credit Minden now. They're back running their good, efficient offense. Han has it. Yeah, we basically need to have the Minden of the third quarter and get back in this game. Right. Ripping, swinging down to Wilkinson, baseline to Gillen. Under the four-minute mark in a quick fourth quarter. Descent, dribble, penetration, went up for the shots, and they're going to say it's on the floor. That'll be team foul number six against the Whippets. So no free throws yet. 3.39 this one, Bobby. You feel like you got some time. But Minden's got some players, too, with some fouls, yeah. including uh, their best ball handler, Priscilla Madras. So, again, wouldn't hurt to get her out of there. And you go back to the missed free throws. McCook has had at times in this game, too. And you hit a few of those, it probably would be still, still single digits. Yeah. And, again, though, it just, it's just hard to come back. And after, you, like I said, you spend so much energy trying to catch them. Long three by Wilkinson. It's no good. Hit the front side of the rim and run down by Nelson. And now Beck... And for Minden with a 13-point lead. We're approaching three minutes left. Skip pass cross court. Kennedy Walter just checking the game. Nearly had a steal. Goes off her hand of bounds. Out of bounds. Goes back to Minden. Yeah, that's the kind of pass I don't think necessary need for it. And yeah, Minden pretty much all wrapped up a uh, a top uh, four seed. Is a nice steal by uh, Dusset. Dusset again. Yep. Yep. She's got a number of those uh, steals again tonight. And Bison turned the ball over. And Han couldn't quite catch it cleanly. That, that, that time goes out of bounds back to Minden. 3-12 left, fourth quarter, 53-40 Wibbets. And a uh, turnover. Uh, loose ball picked up by Gillen. And Brooklyn being pressured. Loose ball, midcourt, Doucette. Now Han. Now Gillen. Baseline, Kennedy Walter. Out front now to Gillen. Three is going to be on the way. Missed it a little wide left. And Minden will let it go out of bounds and go back to Minden underneath. Yeah, the Whippets will join Brook uh, Brooklyn. Uh, Broken Bow and Gothenburg, the top seeds. And uh, McCook could have, if they would have won, well, not done yet, but if they win this game, they would be the four. Four McCook will be the five. 53-40 as we're under three months. What's the fourth quarter? It's flown by, hasn't it? It really has. It's just gone quick. I mean, Minden's had their opportunities. They've moved the ball well and burned some clock as well besides the layups they've got. Yelling in backcourt and pressuring Camry and went for the steal and just uh, got a little bit too much uh, of the arm that time. Committed the foul, and this will be just a fifth team foul. Bison have one more foul to give. Yeah, good hustle by Brooklyn Gill there. Thought she was going to get the steal, but... Again, just got a little too much of the arm. Gracie Weimers will check in for the first time as uh, Tori Hahn will sit. And bounce pass, land, and backcourt still. Left right on the offense, 220 left in this fourth quarter, 53-40. And again, it was 40-35 at one time. Timeout, Minden, want to talk about it. We're back in one minute. Next, it's Bison Basketball, kicks 96-1.
Rich and Bob back here at Minden. Boy, any place you can go and you can play some hearts. Crazy for you. And oh, that, that's just an awesome song. Classics. Absolutely. Oh, my Classics. gosh. What a rift. What a, uh, you know, got the air guitar going up here. 53 40, Bob, 213 left. Bison got to have some miracles right now here. Yeah, going to have every possession now. Going to have to score and really deny Minden their opportunities. Had a chance there. Couldn't quite grab the loose ball. And there is. Maddie Camry to the bucket again, one of their really talented freshmen at 55 40. Yeah, again, she's tall too. I mean, able to kind of just get those layups there and get above the defenders. Bice got to get some shots up. They have, don't have time to, to work around and say, Minden really spread that 2 3 zone out a little bit more as well. And uh, Doucette uh, fouled right near the Bison bench. And that'll be a uh, team foul. So Doucette will go to the free throw line for it. Should be a one and one right here. Well, and again, the scoring when the clock's not running, always uh, the best way to go here on any kind of a comeback. Fourth foul going to be called against Sloan Beck. No, Weeder's the only senior on this ball club. So Minden's, yeah, they got a pretty bright future. And of course, they got the freshman in there. And, and Coach Molesby is the one that said they had a pretty good class coming in next year. So, wow. As wholesale subs check it in. Fouling purposes, you foul. Def uh, defense for offense, Abby Johnson in there. Also, uh, Peach Bortner's in the ball game. Emma Dutton's back in. Taylor and you said that's your five in there. A minute 50 left, and Coach Malsby will substitute some of his uh, players as well. But I think Coach Child's going to get those girls back in after a defense. Yeah, I, don't, I don't think this is conceding the game at yeah, all. I no. think it's an offense-defense thing. Yeah. Second free throw, Horizon Bank free throw number two by Doucette's. Missed it short. And here comes uh, Camry the other way. 55-41, Minden and a steal. Loose ball, Taylor the other way. Stops, pop 13's on the way, no good. Missed it. It's out of bounds off Minden last. Yeah, another uh, steal by Peyton Doucette mm -hmm. on that sideline. And you're exactly right. Now here come the other players. Uh, the starters back in, and of course, Coach Malsby's going to match them. Yeah, I, I think I maybe surprised him a little bit. He was making, maybe Mokuk was going to concede, but uh, nope, it was it was more offense, uh, defense for offense type of deal. Inbounds uh, pass from Walter. Minute fi minute 34 left, 55 41. Minden out front. Gracie Weimer's three balls on the way and good. Gracie spots up, hits a three. 55-44, timeout, McCook with a minute 30 left. Back after a quick break, it is Bison Basketball, kicks 96-1. Richard Bob back here at Minden. Uh, nice job, McCook got a three. Gracie Weimer's that time spot stub. Yeah, he was more a TJ Moore post guy, you know, two step drop slam dunk back in his days. But nice job by Gracie that time. Yeah, again, uh, fresh off the bench. Again, as they say, certainly played in the JV game. But uh, again, a little inspiration there, a little three pointer. And again, McCook's going to probably try and, as they say, stretch this game out potentially as long as they can. So again, uh, going to pick up the full court pressure. 55-44, 11 point lead, a minute 30 left, inbounds pass. Minden, Bison gonna shut off all the pass and lanes, nearly had a five second call, awfully close that time. Quick left for Camry, Paige Bortner I think uh, tried to foul her, but uh, we can't get a call. <laughs> and it, now we get the uh, foul, gonna call that front. I think Paige kind of, you get obvious from up here, uh, kind of was trying to stop the clock and uh, there's your foul, it'll be team foul number six. As they're going to let McCook the subs at the scorer's table. <laughs> he had to buzz it. As uh, Wilkinson, along with Weimers, uh, Gillen, and Walter all check back in. 55-44. Got to get some more steals. Turnover, turnovers right here. And five-second counter. They, get, they got the timeout right there. Coach is right there calling the timeout. 55-44 in the minute 20 left. Take a quick break. We're back. To, okay, but right here it's just a 30. So... Thanks to all of our great sponsors helping us out. A few of them, Pinnacle Bank, also Community Hospital, Devaney Motors, Herman Jones Funeral Chapel, Horizon Bank, and Hot Tub Brokers. Oh, we're busting out the Metallica. <laughs> That's great stuff. Got to love it. Warming up for the next game. <laughs> 
again next week. Uh, by the way, we got more, one more game still to come tonight with McCook and Minden boys. But next week, next Tuesday, Bob and Mark will be over in Lexington. Lex McCook, uh, girls, boys, doubleheader. Mark will be over in in uh, Minkelman for Dundee County Stratton Cambridge on the Hawk on Thursday. Bob and I will be in North Platte for North Platte McCook girls and boys on Friday. And then it's our big day of RPAC Conference basketball first round play from Southwest High on Saturday with a six-game marathon. I'll bring you dinner that night, Rich. <laughs> Thank you very much. You order what you want, I'll bring it out. Off the inbounds, Minden with the basketball. Get the ball inbounds to Nelson. And Bison quickly get a foul. Minute 18 left, but uh, minute of the free throw line as both teams are at the seven foul limits. 55-44. Nelson at the free throw line for a one and one. Minden elects not to keep anybody there at the uh, on the uh, line. Free throws on the way. Nelson hits the first. She'll get one more. Rippin will check back in. Walter will sit. 56-44. Free throws on the way and rolls in. 57-44 in the minute 18 left. Wilkinson pushes it across the timeline. Doucette back to Shauna. Doucette that worked Gracie Weimer's baseline. Three is going to be no good. Rebound by Beck. And the foul going to be called against uh, McCook. And Beck will go to the free throw line. The other end for another one and one. That'll be 18 fouls against McCook. And the foul called. Who called the foul? Free throw is going to be on the way and good. Taylor will check back in. Gillen will sit. 58-44, the minute left. Free throw is going to be on the way and good. 59-44. One minute in this one. Boy, good third quarter. McCook got back in the ballgame, tied the ballgame at 35 with Wilkinson on a jumper, hits it with 56 seconds left, and McCook will burn one of their final two timeouts. Keep it right here, McCook. Boy, Bob, just to kind of recap in case folks are just joining us here. Minden had an incredible first half, led 33-22 at the half. McCook came out, really got after it defensively and offensively. It was a, what, a 13-15-2 run or something like that. Tied the ballgame at 35-35, and then fourth quarter, um, it's pretty much been all Minden. Yeah, again, it's just uh, they had that low, uh, Minden did, where McCook was able to, I mean, again, come all the way back from down 11. And, again, just now it's just been kind of, like I said, expended all that energy to get tied up and just struggled now since then. Minden's also kind of got their act together. Like I said, they had that stretch where they weren't doing a whole lot. So Wait, looking at your staff, Shauna Wilkinson got an another 20-point night, it looks like. Yeah, I mean, totaling it up. Uh, and, again, thank goodness because, uh, again, things could be a lot worse without that. 56 seconds left. The lead's at 13, 59, 46. Inbounds pass. Aaron pass picked off. And McCook has a great pass. Taylor and a jumper by Rippon or by Abby Johnson who was in there for defense uh, a little bit too strong. Oh, that, that layup would have been an 11-point game and a foul called and Minden will get more free throws. Yeah, again, Coach Shiloh, like we said, just really stretching the game out here, trying to get, uh, you know, again, a couple of quick threes to maybe get things a little more interesting. Free throws coming up. Still a one and one, 19 fouls. Maddie Camry at the line. For the one and one. That clock hasn't moved very much. <laughs> no, it, it, the first half of the quarter went off. The, and Minden, six out of seven in the quarter at the free throw line. Second free throw is on the way and go at 61 46, 15 point game. And the Bison turn, oh, nearly turned the ball over. Nice shot by Weimer's corner, retrieves that. Let's do set, runner on the way, missed it. Taylor right there, put backs on the way, and good. And Coach Shaw, what back is left? 648. Quick break, back to Minden here shortly on Kicks 96-1.
Rich and Bob back here at Minden. and that's the final timeout taken by head coach Jamie Schell, and uh, Bob stretches out big time here in the fourth quarter, isn't she? Yeah, again, getting players in, trying to do the offense-defense thing, but Minden's been able to respond to the challenge and uh, uh, definitely hold on the lead in the fourth quarter. 61-48. Boy, I'm really falling behind my scoreboard on my on the Kicks YouTube channel. Sorry, folks. It's a little getting used to, and we got a foul. Uh, once again, 61-48 with 24 seconds left. And Minden will go to the free throw line for it. This will be a two-shot foul. That's, that's team foul number 10. And it will be Maddie Cameron at the free throw line. 4-2 shots. Free throws on the way. Missed it. She'll get one more. Bison and Minden boys, I'm sure, waiting patiently, or probably impatiently, <laughs> ready for their game to get going. Second free throws on the way. Rolled in. 62-48. Shauna Wilkinson across the timeline with 20 seconds left. Long three is going to be on the way. No good. Rebound Nelson. And I don't think McCook will foul right here. You're down a bunch right here. Just try to gamble and try to get a couple of steals possibly. Nelson in backcourt still. It's going to go to bound and send back to McCook. As a wide pass, five seconds left. No harm done. Uh, seedings and everything officially for the Southwest Conference then? Monday. Monday. Monday come out. So what we've heard and everything is McCook, uh, you know, in the, if they would have won this, would be the fourth seed. They would have lost it. Uh, gosh, I hope we're wrong. And maybe maybe they'll get that fourth seed overall. But look, at this, what we heard is most likely Ainsworth. Long three is on the way missed. And your final score is Minden 62, McCook 48. We'll take a break. Post game is on the way here shortly. Kicks 96-1. Rich and Bob back here at Minden. Final score, uh, Minden wins 62-48. Again, tail of two halves, kind of, sort of. It was all Minden first half. Bison, a good third quarter. Got right there, but could not rally back enough in the fourth quarter. Yeah, again, just ran out of gas there in the fourth quarter. 22 points for Minden in that fourth quarter. That's how you preserve a win. Yep. Uh, McCook only 13 in the quarter. But again, I, uh, this Minden team, is, uh, it doesn't seem like they have any superstars out there, but boy, they are very efficient, work well together, and here's their uh, point totals for the night. Uh, Priscilla Madras, ball handler deluxe for them, four points for her. But then you have Maddie Camry with 17. You got Sloan Beck with 10. You got Rosie Nelson with 16. And you got Kim Kinsey Land with 13. So, again, four players in double figures for Minden. Uh -huh. And, again, just a really nice team. They had a chance to crack. I mean, like I said, McCook tied it up at 35 there. And then at that, from that point on, it was nothing but Lady Whippet. So, again, nice uh, again, nice uh, preservation of the wins. They've been, they based quarter, I mean, 18-9 was the first quarter. And that's basically a good win last night against Hastings. But, again, this is a, this is a tough one that they knew coming into this one, that how, how uh, competitive it was going to be. And, uh, again, just uh, were not able to go ahead and get the shots when they needed and just, again, suffer through that first uh, uh, that first quarter. We'll see now what the uh, the Bison boys, they got their hand. You know, they might, I think they'll be favored, but uh, this is always a tough place to play. Oh, yeah, absolutely. No, again, and they're coming off the double overtime game last night. So, again, we'll see how they respond. And, again, Minden, uh, you know that they're going to come ready to play. And they, uh, I believe they had a little bit of a tough time on Thursday, too. 
Uh, both their teams did that night. So uh, hopefully tonight we won't start off with uh, with a dunk uh, technical foul. <laughs> we can we can avoid that maybe. But uh, and I get kid Cole Capel about that. I'm sure. But uh, I'm sure Coach Hymas is. 2:48 uh, for Bob Golk. I'm Rich Barnett. We'll be back to uh, have the Bison Boys pregame in just a moment on Kicks 96.1 High Plains Radio Dine and the KICX app.
And we're back here to Minden High School, Kicks 96.1, HighPlainsRadio.net, the KICX app, and our Kicks 96.1 YouTube channel. As McCook boys and Minden about ready to square off. Boy, 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 some boys. Folks had a chance to watch that game last night uh, or listen to it, Bob and Mark, and packed house at the high school gym really. Uh, wow. Came out, and uh, Hastings team survived 11 1 start and double overtime and got a big win. Got a big one once again last night. McCook now, unlike the girls, uh, the Bison boys will have a top four seeding. They'll have a home game coming up next uh, a week from Monday in the Southwest Conference Tournament. Those parents come out on, on Monday. Uh, Bob, you know, a Minden team that's always respectable on their home court and uh, a, a fellow conference team. You never know. You might play them again, possibly. But uh, they want McCook doesn't want to stop now. they got a good roll going. Keep it going. Yeah, exactly. I mean, and, and again, this is a good Minden team. They played their share of toughies as well. And, uh, again, uh, they're going to be tested here. And, again, they've had the night off, like we said before, similar to the girls. But Cook Boys coming back from playing basically a five-quarter game last night with two overtimes. Mm -hmm. So, again, we'll see how they respond. But uh, this is a game that I, I expect to be pretty intense on both sides. I'm sure McCook will turn up their defense. And again, if they're shooting well, it's going to be hard to stop them. Starting lineups for both teams. You want me to try that? I, yeah. Okay. Well, betcha. for Minden, they'll go with Seth Hauserman, a 5'10 inch junior. Uh, Rylan Holston, another 5'11 junior. Uh, Carter Harston, a 5'10 inch junior. Uh, Braden Schroeder, a 6'2 inch junior. And a Caden Bradley, a 6'4 inch junior. So again, five juniors starting uh, for Minden. Only two seniors on the entire roster for them. And again, McCook's going to go with their typical five. Uh, Cole Kappel, Adam, and looking forward to this. Going to be important to get off to a good start. We saw what happened to the ladies there. Kind of got behind in that first quarter and had to play catch up the rest of the way. So again, uh, Bison boys got to kind of hopefully get that momentum carried over. From the, you know, at, at, especially with that game last night, you know, Rich, at first it was they were never going to be able to come, get back and get even with them. Then they got ahead, and there was no way. And then it got tied up. I mean, the ebb and flow of the game, the roller coaster that happened last night was really pretty amazing. So, But, again, great crowd in town there. A lot of support for the Bison players, and I think that helped carry them through. You, you had a, now last night Hastings had, they had a battle with their big big guy down below who kind of gave him some trouble. You know, this Bradley kid, what we've, I've kind of heard could be another situation where McCook's going to have their hands full down low. Yeah, Braden Power last night for Hastings. I mean, he he was like the the mirror image of Cole Kappel. The way he worked and the way he was banging the boards down there for them, he was a handful for McCook. So again. You know, it, it takes five players, but still, uh, I'm sure McCook's going to have to do some doubling down uh, to try and uh, eliminate some of those points in the paint. Line has been announced. McCook with their starting five out there. Minden will come back and have theirs. First year coach Carter, or Carson Bloom, their old coach Carter Pratt, was last year. Carson Bloom is their new coach this year. And hoping, as he heard in the pregame, hoping they can uh, get back in the winning track. They. Had a win over Ravenna earlier. Lost to St. Cecilia the other night. And now they have three games uh, as well. Uh, once again, uh, the, now McCook, this is only their second game. McCook, which was kind of nice talking to Coach Imus. Such a great week when they, they've had back-to-back -back three game weeks. You know, they had the three games at Sydney. Came back with three games after that with uh, Broken Bow, Gothenburg, and then uh, Sydney on a Saturday. And then this week got into a normal Friday, Saturday, so that Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday to practice that. They need to practice in the worst way. Right, again, just to have that nice gap with nothing in between. Because, again, of course, now next week, then go you go Tuesday, you know, in the Friday. middle of the week type of game, yeah. which makes things, I mean, you're basically just recovering after this game tonight. And then, again, you know, a Lexington team you certainly don't want to lose to next Tuesday. But first things first, Minden McCook to tip it off. Here we go. It'll be Cole Campbell and Caden Bradley at midcourt. So McCook left to right and Minden right to left, tip control by the Bison, Evan Humphrey, and now Adam Duggar. Wow, career night for Adam, 32 last night. Wow. Yeah, I mean, and it was inside, it was outside the whole bit last night for him. So, again, boy, he just, again, kept McCook in the game until the rest of the players could catch up a little. Man-to-man -man pressure by, by uh, Minden early. Brendan Gillen has it right side wing, a free throw line. Now Duggar. Looking inside Cole Cowell on the low block against Bradley. Maneuvers inside the paint. Jumpers up, rolls off. Tipped backside Hegwood and now recovered by Evan Humphrey. Bison a couple early chances once again uh, down low inside the block. Humphrey has it right side now Duggar. Adam spots up. Kind of backed away. Three's on the way. Got a nice roll. Three nothing McCook. I mean, again, carry over. Let's keep it going, Adam. 
Yeah, when you're hot, you're hot. Keep uh, that uh, get the hot hand going. Fire away. Three nothing Bison. Bison go to man to man pressure as well. Mid in their half court set. Schroeder has it. They find Caden Bradley. Kick out three. Harson top of the circle. Got him for three. And we're tied at three. Yeah, again, good movement by Minden there, just kind of around the perimeter, dropped it inside, kicked it back out for the three. Trying to find Cole Campbell, a low block, and tipped out of bounds by Bradley. We'll go back to McCook underneath. Bison without Cam Workmeister again, and this one uh, is still recovering from the illness. Hopefully that uh, big guy can get back to the team next week. Humphrey dumps it down low. Great step through by Cole Campbell on the way. Made it look easy at 5-3. Yeah, again, great move by him. Got the pass and just one dribble. Got on the other side, used the rim as protection. McCook in the lead. And the Whippets back in the half court. Hausman, again, not a, a tall team except, uh, you know, 6'2", 6'4", I guess, and down low. But the guards, uh, uh, none of them registered all below six feet tall. Schroeder, baseline Hausman. Schroeder free throw line. Boy, Bradley's been in, lo in the uh, paint a long time, and they got there. He got him. <laughs> it's like, man, he's been in there. All that was a six count, at least, yeah. for him. And, and that's what you do. I mean, you got to make sure you're in there. But, uh, again, yeah, Bison will take the turnover. 5-3 Bison early. We have a play <coughs> not even away. Here comes Minden. Nice shot of guards and double down that time with the steal. Yeah, again, too many hands there in the, in the uh, three-second lane. Whippets trying to tie or take a lead on this possession right here. Hausman. Picked up by Evan Humphrey. Bison man-to-man -man pressure. Looking for win number 12 of the season. Bison didn't hit double digits since wins to late in the season last year. Bradley, low block, missed the shot, drew the foul. Let's see if they get Campbell or Duggar uh, helping out that time. I think they're going to get Cole Campbell yep, there. You're exactly right. That'll yeah. be his first. Boy, I mean, that's a big body down there, Caden Bradley. And, I mean, Cole Campbell working hard to get around him. But, again, I mean, once he got him on the wrong side there, just kind of shielded him off. Free throws by Bradley, lefty southpaw up there, and it's on the way, good, 5-4. Good crowd of men and folks in front of us here, and uh, good following the Bison faithful on the far side as well. Dynamite crowd last night at the high school gym, 2 of 2 for Bradley, and we're tied at 5 apiece. Score update brought to you by MMB Bank. Bison in control left to right on the offense. Hegwood out front. Josh is kind of due for a breakout game. He's just, you know, three points, five points. He's got to break uh, two, isn't he? Yeah, again, I mean, he's played some really good defense. But, uh, again, yeah, offensively, just uh, he's due was right. Menden gets a steal, a turnover. Bradley has the top of the circle. Now it's Harson. Now Bradley, 5-5 five, five ball game early. Menden half court against the Bison man run their motion offense. They got Bradley post up against a smaller Hegwood. Hegwood tried to draw the offensive foul. Official didn't bite on it. Layups on the wing, good at 7 5 Minden. Yeah, Braden Schroeder with his first two points. Yeah. Oh, it was Schroeder that time. Sorry yeah, about well, that. Wait, these guys called for the girls' game. They're not going to give him anything like that down low. So, again, uh, Josh Hegwood, boy, he's, I'll tell you what, though, he sacrificed his body several times this year trying to take charges. Hegwood has a baseline out front, Brendan Gillen. Out of the five-minute mark, we've had one foul called in this uh, first uh, quarter so far, and there's your second one right there. A little bit of a hand check out front. Blocks to be called against uh, Holston, and that'll be team foul number one against the Whippets. Yeah, again, just impeded the progress there. Yeah, Evan Humphrey has not had a shot yet. 7-5, Bison uh, trailing by two early. Duggar out front from Humphrey. Screen from Cole Kappel. A little pick and roll action lobbed Cole against and there's a foul against Schroeder on help defense. That'll be team foul number two against Minden. Yeah, first foul on Schroeder. And again, typical just a two-man give and go there. We're trying to work Cole Capel underneath again. Josh Hegwood off the inbounds. Looking for red shirts. They baseline Evan Humphrey. Really bought it up by uh, Holston. Not giving him much. Humphrey kick out. Gillen. Good look at a three. Left side shot it too hard. Rebound inside by Holston. Minden the other way. Kick out Schroeder. 7-5 Whippets lead. Hauserman, top of the circle now. Hauserman has it. Swing out left side out of Carter Harson. Skip a press. The other way. Hauserman, deep threes on the way. No good. Missed everything. Went off a Gillen. Recovered by Humphrey. Good defense by the Bison there. Forcing Minden out. Only one done. 7-5. Quick trigger pulled that time by uh, Duggar. Rolled off the rim and rebounded by Minden. One of the quicker shots in the McCook offense. Yeah, again, they've really been, uh, over the last couple weeks, they've really been patient. 
Whippets in the half court with Harson. Schroeder comes out top of the circle and trying to post up Bradley against Capel. Kick out. Three. Holston's on the way. No good. Backside rebound. Adam Duggar. Yeah, again, boy, you gotta, just got to keep the ball away from Bradley down low, and Bison's done a pretty good job so far. Humphrey itching for a three. You know he is, and he buries his first shot of the game, and the Bison have a one-point lead. That's a good sign from the cook there. Get Evan Humphrey off to a good start. 8-7 ball game. Bison lead. Three-minute mark coming up here first quarter. Bradley to the hole, to the bucket. Off, missed it, and he was the last one to touch it. Boy, missed a bunny there. It was contested a little bit, but uh, that's one he'd probably like to have back. Yeah, again, Bison doubled down a little bit there, but, uh, boy, uh, Cole Capel's going to need a little help there. They're going to have to cover both sides of Bradley there because he's pivoted both ways to the basket. So, again, uh, <laughs> he's a load down underneath. Jacob Gomez-Wilson for the first time for McCook. Spells Brendan Gillen. And also Minden comes in with Austin Lukemeyer, one sophomore for the first time. 8-7 Bison lead under three here in the opening quarter from Minden High School. Duggar, top of the circle. Let's swing it down to Hegwood, far side against the Minden man-to-man -man pressure. Humphrey, top of the circle. Evan maneuvering. Now it's Hegwood. Josh through the lane. Got a partially swiped. And here comes Minden off a turnover. Loose ball. Cooper Land, newcomer, a jump hook inside the lanes on the way, miss in a Mintmeyer, and Gomez Wilson that time couldn't take advantage of it. Yeah, neither team able to get really on track so far offensively. Gomez Wilson looking for a lane, kick out Hegwood. Josh to the lane, dumps it outside, great move, little head and shoulder pick by Capel, count and chance at a three point play. Nice job, Hegwood created that uh, great pass. The Capel and the old-fashioned three-point play opportunity right here. Yeah, it doesn't hurt to get a foul on Caden Bradley as well. Picks up uh, his first, I believe. So, again, yeah, Bison, boy, working in tight quarters down there. But, again, Cole Capel with the easy basket. Now a chance for the three-pointer. And the old-fashioned three-point play is 11-7. 2.09 left in the opening first quarter. Minden with a basketball. Whippets going right to left in the offense. Hausman has it up front. Oh, I'm sorry, this is uh, Carson Harson. Carter Harson with the ba basketball. Lukemeyer left side against Duggar. They clear it on out. Lukemeyer took uh, Adam, quite, wasn't quite ready for that one. Little kind of fell behind that time. It's 11 9, Minden. Well, I think he might have thought he had help from Cole Capel yeah. on that, too, because, yeah, he just kind of let him go a little too easy. Humphrey has it, picked up his dribble, needs some help. Now it's Duggar. Swing pass now to Jacob Gomez Wilson. Looking inside, Jacob on the dribble. Nowhere to go out front now to Josh Hegwood. 90 seconds left, quick first quarter. Josh through the lane, got a poked away. And Humphrey races back, and a foul and a little push. Just a hustle foul, but it was a foul against Cooper Land. That'll be team foul number two, a uh, number four already against the Whippets. Yeah, going to get him for his uh, first foul. And again, uh, yeah, tipped by Minden in the backcourt. So again, Bison certainly trying to chase it down there. I think I said Bison trailing it, and they got the lead. I've got to remember, we're in <laughs> Minden and not McCook. It's 11-9, McCook with a two-point lead. <laughs> we, are, we are the guests. <laughs> Lucas Gomez-Wilson uh, in the lineup as well. 11-9, Bison, half-court game. Gomez-Wilson top of the circle. Get a screen from Lucas. A little pick and roll action with the two guards. A runner inside the lane missed it too strong. Again, they both played together uh, last night for several minutes too, and that was strictly a, a two-man give. We're going Minden by two, 11-9 after uh, going winding down the final minute to the bucket. Jumpers off the glass and missed a little strong that time for Harson. Putbacks on the way, missed it. Bison couldn't get the. Uh, uh, defensive boards that time. Lukemeyer will be over the free throw line for a two-shot foul. Yeah, you just hate to give up those second-chance points underneath there. And again, once they get it down there, I mean, it's almost guaranteed if once you go back up, it's going to be a foul. Coach Imus didn't like the whistle that time. It'll be team foul number two against the Bison. Well, and his point is, is again, my guys are standing there right up. What else can we do? Free throw by Lukemeyer is on the way and good. He'll get one more. 11-10, one-point Bison lead. Second free throw is going to be on the way and good as well. 11-11. So the Bison can do this uh, possession right here. Tied at 11. Final minute of the quarter. Lucas Gomez wasn't going to go back door to Duggar. Nice job by Minden. Uh, protection that time. And then Humphrey tried to get an offensive foul, but call for the block. And that'll be team foul number three against McCook. Is that the second against Evans? That is the second against him. And they uh, tried to take the charge, but really he didn't. I mean... Rhythm a little bit, set time on the bench. 
As Gillen back in the ball game, a little backdoor cut, pretty move that time. A little backdoor cut to Luke Meyer. Actually, that was uh, Jake Ryan who's just checking the game. Now the young sophomore. It's 13-11, men by two. Final 22 seconds of this first quarter. Gomez Wilson top of the circle, not a Duggar. Brandon Gillen left open. He bobbled a pass though out front. Jacob Gomez Wilson three balls on the way, missed it. Good check out that Broder underneath. Yeah, the play was to Brendan Gillen there if he could have handled that pass. Five seconds with four long, deep threes going to be on the way and missed, and that's your quarter. It is Minden and 13, and McCall 11 after the first quarter. Back to Minden coming up in one minute. Listening to Bison Basketball on Kicks 96-1. Richard Bob back here at Min and one quarter of the books. And boy, Wibbit's playing to the bison. It's been pretty much nip and tuck back and forth, traded baskets. McCook, I think, had maybe a four point lead at one point in time. Minden, probably the same thing. But again, uh, yeah, the bison. With, uh, Jake Ryan, you have Cooper Lan out there. Bradley's in there, and also with Hauseman. Bison will come back with Kappel, Doug Hagwood, Humphrey with the two fouls, and, and Gillen, the original starting five. And 1 3 1 zone look by McCook to start things off. What do you got, a six foot five guy in your. Top of your of uh, your your one for one. That's pretty tough. Min and open look. Little step back threes on the way and good by Cooper Land. Didn't like where he was to, at the first. He just stepped back out the open three. Exactly. Yeah. No. Again, Cook playing good, but again, Min hits the first shot. 16-11. Nice dribble to drive that time by uh, Adam Duggar. The block's going to be called against the Whippets. That'll be team foul number five, I think, against them. Uh, foul was on the floor. So McCook will get it back. Bison and a dog fight early, trailing it 16-11. Austin Lukemeyer will check back in the game, and uh, that's the second uh, big against Caden Bradley that's right exactly there. Exactly right. No, that's that's the biggest play of that uh, point of that whole play. Is that that's his second foul. So again, Cook needs to work on him. Inbounds pass Hegwood out front now. Gillen, Brendan top of the circle. A little crossover, baseline open. Hegwood threes on the way, missed it. Rebound backside. Humphrey. Oh, he had a nice shot. On the offense rebound, but he stepped out of bounds on the end line, or he would have had a layup. Yeah, exactly. Reverse layup. But Bison back to the 1-3-1 one, one zone look. Hauseman has it. Out of traffic. Baseline. Land. Bison tra some trapping defense applied. Luke Meyer on the low block. Nowhere to go. Kick out Schroeder's three is going to be on the way and missed it. Long rebound right there is Duggar. One and done for the uh, in offense. Kick out three by Cappell is going to be short. Hegwood had good position. The foul called against Jake Ryan of Minden. That'll be team foul number six against Whippets. So the Bison might be shooting free throws here pretty soon. Yeah, got him for his first foul. And again, yeah, just kind of a big swipe at the ball there. So refs are going to call that every time. So Bison going to inbound underneath uh, the Minden basket. Carter Harson back in the ball game for Minden. Ryan Holston as well. 16-11, Bison a little funk offensively. Duggar top of the circle. Between the circles now. Second quarter. Humphrey on the dribble right side. Tough shot. Oh, dude, dump pass inside to Kaplan. Ah, Evan had went out of bounds. Didn't quite get established back in. I thought he was going to take the shot. He was trying to little wrap around pass to Kaplan, and it was got, got knocked away. Yeah, and Minden had that covered as well on the wrap around if they were going to be able to do the pass. So, again, yeah, Bison just, again, kind of haven't scored in the quarter yet and kind of in a little bit of a lull here offensively. Baseline Schroeder has it, and offensive foul. Oh, got to call block against Hegwood. Coach Hyman's didn't like that at all, at all. And, uh, well, if the officials just said push it off. And again, I mean, like is that, uh, if he's good for two or three of those a game. Yeah, exactly right. And Schroeder gets inside the paint. On the skip pass, the layup's on the way, and good. It's 20 to 11, McCook trailing by nine. And timeout, Coach Joe Imus wants to talk about it. Bison needs some talks here. Trailing it by nine. We're back to Minden in just a moment. Bison basketball kicks 96 to 1.
Quick 30 times. We kind of saw in the girls' game. Big win last night against Hastings. Come back today and saying the bye night off last night. Maybe a little bit more well rested. Well, and again, they're coming off basically a 22 point loss to Hastings St. Cecilia, too. So, of course, they're a little bit crabby about that, I'm yeah. sure. And they've just come out with a little bit more intensity. Bison not quite as crisp here in the second quarter. Bison get the basketball. He gets something going. So, the six minute mark, 20 to 11. Minden. Hegwood walks it across the timeline, left to right on the offense. Man to man pressure by Minden. Josh has the top of the circle. Free throw line, baseline, Tucker. Adam hadn't had any shots since uh, early on. He hit that three. Hegwood has it on the dribble, dumps it down. They wanted to dump it down and, and to say he went up and came down. Didn't dump it off in time. He wanted, I think, to go to Capel, but he was covered up and then had to kick it out. Yeah, again, a little indecision here, McCook. Uh, uh, offense just not quite as crisp, not from. But again, just another turnover for them. Bison has got to stick it to him defensively. Back in there, man to brand pressure. Hausman skip pass cross court. Now it's Holston. Splits the defenders and a call for Riley Holston. That'll be uh, fifth team foul against McCook, and the first will be called against Jacob Gomez Wilson. Yeah, again, you know, this is uh, somewhat, uh, if the Bison have had problems during the course of the year, Rich, it's just these, these random kind of just dry spells that yeah. they get, you know, for scoring-wise. It's just, it just has kind of jumped up every once in a while. Free throw number one is good. Okay, he'll get one more. As Lucas Gomez Wilson will get some uh, minutes here. Got a few minutes there in quarter. Number one. Free throws on the way and good. 20 to 11, 22 11. Biggest for the first time. Duggar in backcourt. Adam across the timeline, left right on the offense. On the dribble. Tough shot. Didn't follow out the shot. And then one, I don't know if he's looking inside for Capel again. Likely tipped out of bounds off Minden. Well, yeah, Minden shut that off. I mean, the, the drives and then the dishes on the inside and the, in, the, in the paint, uh, they've really been conscious about trying to cut that off. And I think you're right. Adam Duggar was going to maybe first choice was to make the pass and then saw that was covered, so kind of just tossed up the shot. Inbounds pass. Jacob Gomez Wilson lost it at a bounds off Minden last. Just those guards. Minden get hands down low and then tip passes. We've passes. We've again, some of these passes, again, got to get them off the ankles and getting them, you know, again, getting in positions where, again, you've got so many hands reaching in there. 22-11, Minden and Whippets are uh, right now in control under the five-minute mark. Gomez Wilson dumps it off for Duggar. Adam to the bucket. Jumper inside the lanes on the way. Rolls off. Tipped around. Duggar got it right back. Adam to the hole. Got it swiped away. And here comes Minden. Looked like we had a good chance that time inside the paint. Yeah, a couple different chances there. But, again, ball not going in so far. Whippets back in the half court with 11 point lead. Hausman has the top of the circle. Schroeder against Gomez Wilson. Deep three. It's on the way. Missed it badly. Hausman rebound by Jacob Gomez Wilson. Yeah, that was about three feet too far, right? <laughs> to left side baseline now, Brendan Gillen. Brendan looking to go baseline. Could help defense that time. Schroeder was behind. They had Hausman in front of him. Tipped out of bounds off. Minden McCook will get it back. It just seems like McCook is getting, they're getting so close together. I mean, the, the players, uh, just not quite as, uh, again, just the flow is not the same as last night. Off the inbounds, Brendan Gillen. Inbounds pass. Looking for a red shirt and a high pass. Tipped out of bounds off of Minden last. And uh, Bison very lucky to get that one back. Yeah, again, just even just the simple inbound pass is, is getting to be uh, very tricky for him right now. Still 22-11, 4-13 left quarter, number two, moving by quickly. Inbounds pass, Brendan Gillen. Brendan, that's off baseline, Lucas Gomez-Wilson. And the Bison run their motion against the man-to-man. -man. Brendan Gillen has it. High screen from Kappel. Now he uses it. Right side now to Gomez-Wilson. They have Kappel, low block, low head and shoulder pick off the glass and good. I didn't know if they were going to get it to him and quick enough. He was he was there early, but found him a little, little late, but he got the bucket. That's the first points of the quarter, isn't exactly it? Exactly right. Yeah, first bucket up for McCook in the quarter. 22-13 at 3.40 left in the second quarter. Holston has it. Dump it down low to Schroeder on the low block. Nice help defense. McCook throws a tough shot up. Rebound by Cappell. Well, and again, that time good defense by McCook. Arms straight up. Offensive player actually jumped into them. Duggar baseline. Out front now to Brendan Gillen. Turn pass to Adam. They're going to back to Cole Cappell. The foul's going to be called on a hold on a low block against Lukemeyer. Uh, Austin Lukemeyer. And is that situation once again for the Bison? 
as Haywood will check back in. We'll see Lucas Gomez Wilson sit out. And this will be a one one for Cole Campbell. Boy, you sure don't want to let things get away from you here before the first half. If nothing else, try and chip away a little bit this. And again, a couple of three-pointers would be uh, instrumental in that comeback. Evan Humphrey checks back in. And again, he's only had one shot. He made it, but he's only had one yeah. opportunity. That's hard to believe, just one shot from him. Capital the free throw line for a couple of Horizon Bank free throw number one. Hopefully he gets a second on the one and one. 318 left free throw is going to be on the way and good. 22-14 on the Capital free throw. One more for the senior. 22-14, second free throw is on the way and good. Good follow through, 22-15. Bison cut it down to seven. Headwood off the inbounds, giving Car Carter Harson a little static. And minute across the timeline, right to left. Harson on the triple free throw line, dumps it off, nobody was home. Higwood there on the loose ball. Bison creating some turnovers here. Trailing by seven. Gomez Wilson has it way up front. Humphrey in a backdoor cut and the pass was broken up. Luke Meyer was just waiting for that pass to come by. Yeah, too many bodies there in the middle there. Again, he left, uh, Josh Haywood left his defender in the dust as uh, Minden's going to go ahead and take a 30-second timeout. Quick break, 22-15. Whippets uh, with the lead. We're back to... Once again, a minute here shortly, the kick's 96-1. We're back to Minden High School, 22-15, 2.46 left, Bob. Again, uh, low scoring game, not a lot of points in the second quarter. Bison hanging around as long as they go to halftime. It's got plenty of time to make a run here before the half. Right, again, I mean, Cole Cap with the only four points in the quarter from McCook. And again, yeah, you just kind of get the impression. And it was a little bit similar. You know, they chased Hastings for most of the game last night. And then once they got ahead, you felt like things were going to be okay. And again, we went into two overtimes to settle it. But yeah, this is another game where McCook's kind of been forced to chase a little bit more uh, since the early part of the uh, second quarter. Bison uh, on defense once again. 2.45 in the quarter, trailing 22-15. That was been across. Luca Meyer on the left side brings Capel away from the bucket. Harson shut off by Humphrey. Evans done a pretty good job with the two early fouls, not picking up that third block. Luca Meyer takes traffic, tough shot, little jump hook off the glass and good. 24-15. Yeah, again, a lot of players, a lot of bodies around there, but again, good body control by him to get that basket. Bice got to respond here, approaching two minutes left, trailing by nine again. 24-15. Duggar spots up three. He's going to be on the way. Hit it. Just got to get more shot opportunities. Nails a three. Makes it a 24-18 game. That's really what it's boiled down to is that McCooks just had not had as many opportunities. Back front, Harson. Top of the circle, that Hauserman. Schroeder in the low block, and the foul's going to call. Offensive foul against Schroeder. He a little swim move, apparently, I guess. Uh, what the official kind of said, and... Uh, it's no, I think I uh, should have been a hold instead of an offensive cow. Yeah, he must have yeah, he said the old swim move, like you said there, to get him. <laughs> so, again, Bison will take it here. Gosh, you know, I mean, two three-pointers would tie this thing up. And, uh, again, you'd like to see think that they would come out and have much better second half. Minute 47 and a half. Bison trailing by six. Cut it down a little bit more in this possession right here. Gomez Wilson, pass tipped out of bounds. And McCook will get it back. Well, they really anticipate well with those those passes don't they yeah again they got hands in the passing lanes and again McCook ran you know kind of their typical set here so off the inbounds Hegwood 24-18 Bison looking for another big road win big road games tonight Lex next Tuesday and uh, North Platte next Friday nice dribble penetration that time Hegwood buckets a four-point game 24-20 yeah boy good body control by him and again kind of got hit on the way up and still was able to make it Bison get a good stand here, minute 19 left. Get another possession, hopefully, before the end of the quarter, into the half. Hausman, Carter Harson. Again, Bradley's been on the bench with the two fouls, so they haven't had uh, much inside game with him. More Schroeder, and again, Lukemeyer off the bench as well. Cooper Land, no nothing. Out front now, it's Isaac Keene, who's a newcomer in the ballgame. Deep threes on the way by Hausman, no good. Rebound by Cooper Land, new, new life for Minden. Harson, and now they'll reset their offense out front of Hausman with 45 seconds left in the quarter in the half. Hausman pressured by Adam Duggar. 
Picked up on the jump switch by Gomez Wilson. Out front now, Cooper Land. Got past Hegwood, and, and they're going to call Josh. A little hold here out front, and that'll be team foul number six. Cook had one waist before they put him in the, in the yeah. bonus. So again, no harm done there. And again, Josh Hegwood just a little push in the back there is all. So, boy, yeah, again, you'd sure like to see McCook get one more shot at off at least here, but it looks like Minden's going to try him for the last one. That is Hegwood's second, so keep that in. He and he, uh, Humphrey both have two. Off the inbounds, land, top of the swing of the Hausman. They swing it over right side of Carson. Almost lost it, 26 in the clock. Minden resets. Hausman, top of the circle now. Cooper Land, pressure by Jacob Gomez Wilson. Loose ball picked up by Duggar, and they're going to call a foul against Minden as the Bison off the races that time, and the foul first, and that will give McCook 1-1 one one at the other end. It's the 19th foul. Yeah, Cooper Land there just, again, on the turnover, trying to make up for that. Again, got called for the foul, so again, McCook going to be able to score here before the end of the half. Jacob Gomez Wilson, the free throw line for a one Horizon Bank free throw, hopefully a second. We'll see Bo Beaker uh, the free throw at the uh, score table. He'll check in for Cole Cappell. Bo, hopefully, not thinking about his Patriots Bills games tonight. He's a big Cats <laughs> fan. Gomez Wilson, the free throw line for the one and one free throws to be on the way. Good. Gets a second Horizon Bank free throw right here. 24 21 Minden. It looked a little ugly there for a while, Bob. It weren't, it weren't scoring. It was well, and again, yeah, it's, it's been funny. Everybody, uh, it was tooth and nail for both teams maybe that first quarter, and then we've had kind of a tale of two uh, two halves here in this quarter. Second free throw by w Gomez Wilson. Good. Two point game, 24 22. This guy needs to sit down. Thank you. <laughs> kicked ball. Yeah, kicked ball is what they said. But boy, uh, not much of an effort to kick it by uh, <laughs> Jacob Gomez Wilson. A player almost bounced it off his leg more than anything. Meyer inbounds pass to Harson. Pressured Harson across the timeline. Pick up by Lucas Gomez Wilson. Just check, check the back of the game. Six seconds left. Cooper Land, top of the circle. They finally figure out Hausman. Will they get a shot up? No, they won't. That's the end of the first half. And a nice defensive stand. Bison fight their way back and trail by two at the half, 24 to 22 at halftime. Bob and I will talk about it. Stats after the break. You're listening to Bison Basketball on Kicks 96-1. Richard Bob back here at halftime, 24-22. Bob, great comeback for the Bison here in the last couple of minutes of this uh, second quarter. Trailed by double digits, but fought the way back. Good defensive stand, just a two-point. And pretty much uh, Minden owned the first half of that second quarter, and then McCook came back in the second uh, for, their, for their girls' team. I mean, plenty of players scoring. Minden had seven players in the scoring column here in the first half. 
with uh, Ryland Holston with four, Carter Harson with three, Cooper Land with three, Jake Ryan with two, led them with six, and Braden Schroeder with four. He had those, uh, well, Schroeder only with four of them. Caden Bradley, he has those two fouls. He only had two points. So for McCook, uh, Cole Kappel picked up again from last night. He had nine points. Adam Duggar also with six. Uh, Evan Humphrey with just basically, I think the only one shot that he had, he made for three. Uh, Jacob Gomez-Wilson with the two free throws and Josh Hagwood with the basket there. So 24-22, you know, took five players in the scoring column, but uh, again, just uh, much different than last night. Just not able to get in the flow of the offense as much so far. But again, they stopped the bleeding in that second quarter and made a nice comeback here to get I mean, to basically tie things up here at the end of the first half. So anybody's ball game, and again, not a game McCook wants to lose. I mean, great momentum after last night, nice comeback. And again, you sure don't want to uh, go into the, you know, you can have a nice week here if you get the second half of this one, again, against the team, a Minden team that will help them with points also. Hey, you, you and Mark did the game last night. This uh, That first half, what was the halftime score last night? Was a lot more scoring? Oh, golly, let's see. It ended up with 75 and stuff. No, I think we were, we were down around the 30s for okay. the most part, right. uh, you know, down in, in last night. And again, but uh, it's just funny how it's just, again, the dry spells, how they... Two, Bob, and I will take a break. We're back with the second half coming up in just a bit. You're listening to Bison Basketball Kicks 96-1.
Richard Bob back here at Minden. Halftime just about over, Bob. 24-22. Who's, what's going to give here in the second half? Yeah, anybody's ball game for sure. So, again, he'll be uh, starting here in the second half. They're going to go with their original five, and I'm sure McCook will as well. Themselves in at least a position now. And this would be, again, a good point win for McCook. By Humphrey has two. I think that's pretty much it, isn't it? It is exactly right. Yeah, nobody really. And, again, we talked about uh, Minden. They have a couple players uh, with two fouls, Cooper Land and then Caden Bradley as well. So McCook will inbound at the start second half, and let's have a couple good quarters here. Here we go. Boston trailing by two, 24 to 22. Right to left in the offense. Duggar has it. Takes a baseline looking for Cole Cappell quickly on that low block against uh, Bradley. Pick up a third maybe. Double team. Nice cut by Gillen. Kick out Duggar. Boy, if Brendan would have turned around, he had a shot. Now it's Duggar, top of the circle. Humphrey has it. They're having not too many shot opportunities for him. Free throw line, still looking. Now it's Brendan Gillen. 24-22, first possession. McCook right here. Cappell steps out three. Kind of a flat shot. Missed it. Rebounded by Humphrey. And now no chance to re Duggar top of the circle. A little pick and roll out with uh, Hegwood. Now it's Cappell top of the circle. Hegwood trying to post up uh, Carson. They go a different direction. Now it's Gillen. Gillen on the move. Oh, boy, he keeps going. He had another shot. They dump it off for Duggar. Three balls on the way. Missed it. And rebound Minden. Yeah, Brendan Gillen likes I agree with you, Rich. Two different times now. He may be. Two. Minden with the basketball, the two-point lead. Schroeder has it. Trying to find. Bradley low block, bump and run with once again uh, Cappell. Missed the shot, rebound Cole Cappell, the defensive board. Well, I'll tell you what, in good straight up defense by Cole Cappell too. Bradley looking for contact and Cole held his ground. Hegwood crossover dribble, free throw line, little spin move, dumps it up for Cappell, drops step off the glass and good. Pretty move, we're tied at 24. Well, I'll tell you, tight quarters down there, but they're finding the open man and may able to convert. 24 piece, early third quarter. Top of the circle, Holston, swing it on the left side of Harson. Hausman, that post up Bradley, low, low block, kind of bumbled the, uh, fumbled, fumbled the pass, got it, uh, the ball, recollected himself, got the bucket up, but good, it's 26-24. Yeah, get a much easier shot for him, good use of the backboard. Two-point whip at lead. Duggar has the top of the circle, tough man-to-man -to -man pressure by Minden. Duggar baseline, lost on the way up, uh, lost the handle, and here comes Hausman. Off the loose ball. Just kind of flew out of his hands that time. And a walking violation against the whip. It's the other way. Yeah, that was reminiscent of the girls game. One of those sideline yeah. passes. Just no room. If you catch it, you got no room to, to maneuver once you try and hit the ground. Jacob Gomez Wells will check in. And uh, Brendan Gillen will sit. Boy, got to get Evan Humphrey some shots here, yeah. Rich. You know, again, I mean, he's just uh, has had not had any opportunities hardly at all. 26-24 Minden. Almost three minutes gone. Quarter number three from Minden High School. Hegwood top of the circle. A little pick and roll action trying to get uh, Cappell set up in the middle. Gomez Wilson, they find Cappell low block. Cole spins one way, double team. Got to get out of the lane. Loose ball. Nice job of the guards once again. Loose ball down court. Schroeder ahead of the pack. Hegwood is an offensive. Again, uh, Josh Hegwood. I mean, he, he must take four or five of those a game and got yeah. rewarded that time. But again, he had position there. And again, Minden just not aware of, of his presence there with the obvious charge. 26-24 in the first uh, team foul against either, t either player. Either team, I should say. That's a third foul. Going to be called against Schroeder. So he's got three, and uh, and Bradley's got two. Hegwood with some pressure across the timeline, right to left, 26-24, Minden. Hegwood free throw line, nowhere to go now, Humphrey. Evan shut off baseline, we got a foul on a, it was, got smacked in the head, looks like Holston. Excuse me, uh, smacked in the head, and uh, that'll be the second team foul against uh, Minden in the quarter. Well, yeah, credit uh, Rylan. Holston, too. I mean, he's really played good defense. Yeah. We talk about Evan Humphrey not getting any shots. I mean, part of the reason why is because of his good defense. So Schroeder will leave. And Lukemeyer will check back in. Off the inbounds, it's McCook off the inbounds. Gomez-Wilson out front. The Bison set up their half court. Minden staying that man-to-man -man pressure. 26-24. Whippets by two. Three minutes gone in the corner. Baseline Cappell. Out front, Gomez Wilson takes a three for the leads on the way, missed it, rebounded by Bradley. Yeah, again, good ball movement by McCook, just not able to convert on the shots. Looking for down low to Luca Meyer, and then broke it up, and, and, and Minden gets it right back. Bradley, low block, count it, chance at a three point play. Yeah, 
Cole Capel going to pick up his second foul there. And again, when he gets it down low in the right spot, he's really tough. But I mean, I, at some point, you might just want to either double him or else you're going to have to foul him and make, some, uh, make him make some free throws. Capel, number two on him. Second team foul this quarter. Caden Bradley at the free throw line for the old-fashioned three-point play. Free throws on the way and good. 29-24 lead for Minnens up to five. Bison respond here as we're approaching the halfway point to quarter number three. Hegwood has the top of the circle. Do we have another double overtime thriller in, in store as a steal? Bites by, your tongue. By <laughs> Minden lamps on the way and good. A Holston and McCrick will burn a timeout. 31-24 Whippets. Take a break. Going to be a full timeout back in one minute next on Kicks 96-1. Richard Bob back here at the Minden High School gym. Bob, just like that, up to a seven-point game. It was kind of nip and tuck closely early, but a seven-point game now. Yeah, Minden seven points in the quarter. McCook only two with that Cole Capel put back. So, again, here we are again, you know, about three and a half minutes and just kind of, again, one of those little scoring droughts that, that we've uh, had occasionally during the course of the year. Bison gets something going here at the, almost the halfway point, 425 in the quarter, 31-24 Whippets. Hegwood across the timeline, pricked up, random, nothing but man-to-man -man pressure by Minden a lot. Hegwood had the ball kind of get away from it. And then another steal. Did not see Holston come out of the corner of his eye. It leads to a layup at 40 or 33-24. I mean, that's just pure hustle by Ryan Holston. I mean, again, just good awareness by him. Josh Hegwood caught sleeping on that. Gomez Wilson has it out front. Or Minden licking their chops. He's got a Class B ranked team in town. A chance to get an upset. Gomez Wilson to the bucket. Looking to get a pass into a cap on that baseline, but sent it wide out of bounds. Yeah, again, just nothing's coming easy. You know, again, uh, you, we were feeling pretty good here at the start of the quarter, yeah. and now all of a sudden, again, it's a nine-point deficit, and now you're going to have to chase again. 33-24, nine-point whippet lead. And with the basketball, Bison defense going to have to be good. Parson across the timeline out front, nearly a steal by Duggar the other way. Awfully close, right near the sideline. Scramble, hot potato, and timeout coach Bloom. He saw the ball ricocheting around. They finally got possession, called the timeout. 33-24, Minden by nine. We're back after the break. It is Bison basketball and kicks 96-1. Pretty intense uh, huddle there with Coach Joe Imus. Uh, the lead's gone to nine, Bob, and, and uh, he, he's getting into it. He's trying to get his kids going again. Yeah, again, just got to get them fired up. And like I said, you just blink your eyes, and all of a sudden it's, it was 24-24 now, 33-24. So, again, Bison going to have to try. Hausman out front. Now it's uh, Ryan Holston. Ryland Holston with the basketball. 
Hausman, they post up a low block. Bradley just, boy, bobbled the, the pass. I don't think it was poked away. And it goes out of bounds. McCook gets the break and gets it right back. Yeah, McCook's going to really have to start doubling down on Bradley down low when he gets the ball. It's just too hard for Cole Kappel to handle him one on one. Bison with the basketball trailer by 9, 33, 24 here. Getting late in the third quarter. Gomez Wilson out front. High screen from Kappel. Almost a near steal. It goes out of bounds and it go off of. Going to say it went off of McCook. Couldn't tell when that, when that pass went off of Jacob's uh, shoe or not. Well, yeah, again, he, he took off after it like he, would, he was going to. Then he went ahead and let it roll out. So I kind of thought it might have went off the Minden player. But. Josh Hickwood back in. Gomez Wilson will set 33-24. Minden a chance to build that lead back to double digits here. Whippets also have uh, J Jake Ryan back in the ballgame. Luke Meyer down the low block, and they're going to call offensive foul and a push off as Cooper Land pushing off of Adam Duggar here at midcourt. Yeah, just a bad pass, and again, collision there. Adam Duggar had the inside track on that, so again, Bice needed to uh, you know, uh, take the, uh, advantage of these turnovers. 3.08 left to third quarter, and a Bice 3.24 trailing, needs some points. Hegwood has the top of the circle. Baseline now, Brendan Gillen. On the move, left side, Adam Duggar gets a good look. He's off the mark, though. Rebound, Cabell came right to him. Pump fake, missed the shot. Put back, Mike Gillen, chance at a three-point play. Nice shot, Brandon, the back side right there. Timed it nice. Put back is good, and a chance, the old-fashioned three-point yeah, play. Yeah, I thought Cole Cappell was going to be able to get that third yeah, foul so on Kaylee, but uh, un unable to. But, yeah, uh, Brandon Gillen, right place at the right time there. Much-needed basket by McCook. Second foul against Luca Meyer. We'll see Schroeder checking back in the ball game. Fourth team, actually, the that's the yeah fourth team foul against Minden of the quarter. Gillen's free throw is on the way and good. Makes it a six point Minden lead, 33 27. Bison defense, Bison bench getting into it. Trying to try and get their teammates going defensively with 241 left in the third and trailing 33 27. Almost near by Gillen on the low block. Schroeder off the block. Bradley has it. Far side, near still by Humphrey. Pull up jumper is on the way and good. Cooper Land as the gamble by Humphrey did, couldn't quite reach at that time. Yeah, when they've uh, made those attempts and not come through, Minden's really made them pay for it. 35 27 leads at eight. Duggar, right side, baseline, capital. And I think we're getting Mr. Bradley for his third. And that's the fifth, the team foul. And so Coach Bloomis see what he does. He'll gonna leave him in there. No, yep, he's gonna leave him in there. He's gonna sit, he's gonna stay. 214 left. Heg went off the inbounds. Humphrey baseline. Brendan Gill on top of the circle. Adam Duggar. Post up high post to Kappel. Cole maneuvering and the foul first on the floor and a reach. That'll be team foul number six. Yeah, nothing's easy down low. Yeah. I mean, there's just bodies down there and players. I mean, when you force it in there, you're going to have a, a contact. So foul McCook will go to the line. Next foul. We've got two minutes left in the third quarter. Hegwood off the inbounds. Bison again trailing by eight. 35 27 off the inbounds. Humphrey got a look. Baseline three missed it and drew the foul. Boy, they are really concerned about Humphrey. They've done a pretty good job all night, Bob, but uh, that time it's Holsting got her way too close. Not foul. Yeah, and I think that's his fourth foul, too. So, man, he's done a really nice defensive job on Evan Humphrey tonight. He's been dogging him the whole game. A couple of Horizon Bank free throws once again for Evan Humphrey, who is, again, not and short in the free throw. He's not had many looks at all. Those men and guards have been in, in his grill all night long. 35-27, second free throws on the way and missed that one. One more for the junior. It's on the way, missed all three, yikes. Here comes men in the other way. Yeah, that's tough to swallow. How is the man in the foul's gonna be called against Hegwood. He got too close there up front defensively. That'll be just the second team foul going to be called against uh, against McCook in the half. He had third foul on Josh Hagwood again. And, yeah, McCook trying to turn up the pressure defensively. And so, again, there's going to probably be more of these kind of calls during the course of the last, uh, looks like about 10 minutes of the game, actually. Gomez Wilson will spell Humphrey, give him a break. A minute 58 left, 35-27. Still been stuck on this score for a while. Hausman against Hegwood. Out uh, front now, it's Jake Ryan. They post up Bradley. Spin move inside the lane. Rolls off. Rebound. Capel Boyd looked like Bradley could have picked up his, another foul and a, over the back ball, but not the case. Loose ball all the way back to near midcourt. And Jacob Gomez-Wilson with a big steal the other way. Stops, keeps that pivot foot bang, and got fouled. 
No question, that was not a walk, people. That was just a put the pivot foot down right. and keep it down. Jacob to the free throw line for a two-shot foul. Cooper Lamb picks up his third foul for Minden. So again, yeah, I mean, some of the starting to mount up a little bit, you know. Coach Bloom is, is telling his bench guys, you guys, <laughs> if we can keep racking these fouls up, you guys got to play key parts in this uh, fourth quarter especially. First free throw by Gomez Wilson on the way and good. He'll get one more. Bison were stuck in 27 for a while. 35, 28 with 90 seconds left in the third. Minden by seven. Second free throw is on the way. Shot is short. I think it's the first miss for Jacob tonight at the free throw line. Yeah, three out of four. Whippets have the ball with a minute 25 left. Trying to get a big upset here at home. On a Saturday night, loose ball, nearly, nearly steal, but Hauseman comes back with it. They post up on the low block, Lukemeyer against Duggar. Shot blocked by Adam on the way up, and here comes McCook the other way. Gomez Wilson, now Brendan Gillen. Whip pass backside, Hegwood. Baseline, nowhere to go. Out front, Gillen. Big threes on the way. Missed it, rebound by Bradley. Good open yep. shot by Brendan Gillen. Under a minute left in the third, 35-28. Whippets have the basketball. Hauserman. Out front. Pressured by Hegwood. And near still by Duggar. He, he, he try, goes into the bench for Minden. Nearly a big steal and a save that time, but he was out of bounds. Yeah, great anticipation by Adam Duggar. Lucas Gomez-Wilson will spell uh, Josh Hegwood. Evan Humphrey is going to check back in as well. In for Brendan Gillen. Yeah, just a tough shooting night for the Bison. Yeah. Certain Minden's defense has been good, no question about it. But boy, they've played teams certainly with as good a defense as these guys. Parson Bradley. Here right side now to Jake Ryan. And lost the handle, and Hausman saves it before it's an over and back. Nice shot by Gomez. Well, with a steal, but then again, uh, couldn't quite handle it. And here comes uh, Minden with 20 seconds left in the quarter. Out front now, it's Harson. Bradley Hauseman at 11 seconds left in this third quarter. 35-28, minute play for a final shot. Carter Harson, nowhere to go. Two seconds, takes a shot, misses, and that's your quarter. Wow, what a crazy quarter it was. 35-28, minute. The fourth quarter is coming up here shortly on Kicks 96-1. here and again the uh, uh, Bison had to do a little rallying uh, yesterday or last night and again gonna have to do the same thing here but boy you just they just need some more offensive opportunities I mean it's just it seems like the shots have been just hard to come by nobody can get on any kind of a roll or a flow so again Minden 11 points in the quarter only six from a cook in that third quarter so again uh, gonna need a little fourth quarter magic here Bison have committed only two team fouls in the, in the half so they could play aggressive defense that's for sure and eight Eight committed by Minden, some quick shooting free throws for the rest of the half, and Duggar with a steal. Nice job in the pass in the lane, and the lamp's on the way, and good. That's a start right there, makes it a five-point game, 35-30. Yeah, again, it's just one of these games, I'll make this comment, that if McCook can ever just get on top, you feel pretty good. But again, just been uh, chasing the whole second half here. Harson has it up front, can buy some man-to-man -man pressure. Looking inside for Bradley, can't find him. Good cover up by Kappel. Hausman has it out front. Pressure by Humphrey. Near steal again by Duggar. Awfully close. Hausman, top of the circle. Deep threes on the way. Missed it. Rebound to Evan Humphrey. Had Duggar uh, release in that time. Adam Tump fake off the glass and good. 35-32 in a three-point game. Yeah, Adam Duggar went for the steal and just kind of kept on 
Bison going down court. And again, Bison able to come up with the basketball. A minute gone. The Bison score the first four points of the quarter. 35-32. Hausman out front. Matched up against Duggar. Out front, Schroeder. Post up Bradley away from the basket. Good drop step. Missed the shot. Drew the foul. Luckily, that wasn't, uh, once again, a uh, three-point play opportunity. Yeah, again, third foul on Cole Cap. But again, yeah, better to send him to the free throw line than let him make those little bunnies down there. And that's Cole's fourth. Uh, so he's got to be careful the rest of the way. Oh, it is his fourth. I only had him for three. So, yeah, again, they're going to have to double down with him. 13 foul, and Bradley short in the first free throw. He'll get one more. Harson uh, back in. Uh, Riley, Ryland Holston back in the ballgame as well for Minden. Yeah, Bradley was three for three before that last, last miss, so see if he can do it again for us. Bison with a good surge here. They started the fourth quarter, four straight points. We get a three-point game. Second, second free throw is too long. Short and then too long. Here comes Duggar the other way. Lead pass, Brendan Gillen. Kick out of Humphrey for the tie. Short on the three. Rebound, kicks by Duggar, but recovered by Humphrey. Evan stops. He wants another three. It's on the way. Missed it. Rebound. Tipped around. Recovered by Minden. Yeah, boy. He's just, again, had many opportunities tonight and kind of forced one there. Itching for that shot. Maybe shot a little bit too quick. Schroeder, left side. Little pump fake. Runs right into Gillen. Going to take the shot anyway. Missed the shot. Brendan, strong rebound. Humphrey the other way. Lead pass. Duggar the other way. Adam layups on the way and good. It's a one-point game. Duggar's got all six in the quarter. Adam Duggar's show is right. Going to bring him back by himself. Two minutes gone in the quarter. Bison trail by one, 35-34. Harson out front. Hauseman, top of the circle, down to Holston. Three-guard look. Spots up three. He's going to be on the way. Missed it. And rebound by Humphrey. And Minden's gone cold now. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I think that shot was a little bit early, too. No Minden players anywhere close to the basket on that. Bison a chance to take their first lead in a long time. Gillen has it right side. On and through the answer the three-point play. Adam went uh, up and tried to uh, block the shot, contested a little bit, and uh, got him with the body, too. So the old-fashioned three-point play. Yeah, again, that's either either let him go and give him the points, or if you're going to block the shot, then or, or foul him. Make sure you foul him so he can't shoot. Gomez, Wilson, Jacob will check back in. Gillen will sit. 37-34 and a three-point men in lead at 6.20 or 5.26 left in the fourth quarter. Fourth team foul against McCook. Free throw is going to be on the way and got this one to go. 38-34. And some token pressure once again by Minden. That left in the offense. Oh, double team and Hausman got a steal. Layups on the way and good. Didn't see the double team coming and uh, the, lead, the layup leads to a six-point game, 40-34. Yeah, again, every possession important. and got to be aware of what, who's out there on the court. Humphrey across the timeline, six-point game. Bison had, had it down to one earlier. Gomez Wilson, three, is going to be on the way and good. Jacob spots up and cuts it in half with 40-37. to 37. I'll tell you what, he's really getting a little more confidence out there offensively. Minden back with the basketball. We approach quarter number four, 40-37 whippets. Posted up Schroeder and a, a mismatch. Pump fake off the glass. Inches. Nice job, a little head and shoulder fake at 42-37. Yeah, you know, Minden, they've gone down low when they needed a basket bad, and Bison, again, just having a hard time stopping them down there. Kegwin has it right side. Now it's Gomez Wilson on the low block. It's Duggar out front now to Kappel. Cole, take it to the bucket. Count it, chance in a three-point play. Is that Bradley? Maybe, possibly. It doesn't matter. Nice, strong move by Cole Kappel. And Horizon Bank free throw to Boots. Trying to make it. Down to three, could be down to two, 42-39. Yeah, foul call on uh, Seth Hauserman, only his first. 19 fouls against the Whippets. Um, double bonus next time. Uh, next foul. Capel free throw lines on the way and rolls off. Bradley on the defensive board. Parson across the timeline. Approach the halfway point, quarter number four. Bison trailer by three, 42-39. They post up Schroeder against Humphrey. Offensive foul. Oh boy. Evan might have sold that one that time a little bit more. And the, the Minden folks are not happy at all with that one. Yeah, that was, uh, that was impressive. That was <laughs> NBA quality dive, <laughs> frankly. Yeah, but, I mean, he did have position. I yeah, mean, it's did. not as if he jumped. But, I mean, but yeah, that was embellished a little bit, I'm the, sure. The so natives are getting restless around here after on that one. <laughs> yep, be careful. They're all around. Yeah. Ten team fouls, but no free throws in the player control foul. Hegwood the other way. 
Josh behind the back dribble across the timeline. Bice can cut it to one or tie it. Ah, and a tough pass. Hagwood over the head of Duggar that time. Too high with a left-handed pass and goes back to Minden. Yeah, a couple turnovers here lately on the offensive side. Bison got them where they want them. It's down to a three-point game here. It looks like Minden's going to go ahead and take a full timeout. Yeah, one official did not hear the timeout, so it's 42-39. We're back. Uh, quick break. It's Bison basketball. Kicks 96-1. Back here to Minden, Rich Barnett, Bob Golke, 42-39. Uh, boy, the fans getting their money's worth here in the fourth quarter, Bob. 3.53, long time, long ways to go, just a three-point game. Yeah, again, uh, just two great games, actually, for uh, for the weekend here for the Bison boys. Again, getting challenged by Minden here. And, and again, going to have to have those possessions, make care, take care of the basketball. But Minden's had a little bit of trouble here trying to kind of kill off the clock a little bit. So, again, try to keep the ball out from, uh, from going down low to Caden Bradley. Uh, or to uh, Braden Schroeder. Either one of those two have been really tough down low. Whippets will get the ball now the, uh, right near the McCook bench. Kappel, Duggar, Hegwood, Humphrey, Gomez Wilson, Jacob Gomez Wilson, the five out there. Bison trying to shut off Hassan Lanes. Nearly had a steal. And they're going to say it went off of uh, Minden out of bounds. Duggar went for the gamble steal, and then it was right, and then Lukemeyer picked it up. But apparently they say that he was the last one to touch it. Yeah, he was right on the line there, too, again. So Adam Duggar uh, trying to do it on all the offense and defensive ends. 3.52 left in the ballgame, 42-39. Bison again a chance to cut it to one or, or uh, tie it up right here. Gomez Wilson has it, top of the circle. Not closely guarded. Take it to the bucket. Good move to Kappel. Bobble to go well, kick it out to Duggar. Adam, three for the tie. It's going to be short. Recovered by Lukemeyer. As uh, Hegwin is all over Lukemeyer in the low block, and now they finally get a uh, foul against... Oh, they just called a kickball. Didn't call a foul at all. Just called a kickball. Yeah, just... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't think our excitement's over here yet. Yeah, only 3.30 to go, and I'm... <laughs> People are getting a little crabby. Yeah, we got the Minden folks right in front of us. Not happy at all. Heck, what nice job on and the I'm inbound. I'm not so sure I blame them on a couple of these yeah. either, by the way. So. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, inbounds pass. Lukemeyer, 42 39, three and a half minutes left off the inbounds. Hauseman and stepped out of bounds. Line or traveled, yeah. One of the two, yeah. Sideline pass. Boy, the sideline passes, girls, boys, games have been horrible tonight. Yeah, again, just some of the decisions are just, it's really strange that you're, you're forcing people into corners and borders. And Bison will call timeout. They got a possession chance right here. Coach Joe Imus has got timeouts to burn and say, let's set something up here. They've had 42-39 last couple of times and then nothing to show yeah, for it. Yeah, neither team able to get off this number and stuff. And again, you know, just, gosh, let's just tie the game up at least or whatever, or get ahead by a point, and let's see what happens after that. Because, again, Minton's just really kind of gone into a shell a little bit here in the fourth quarter. Reminder, coming up next week, Bison uh, basketball returns at Lexington coming up on uh, Tuesday night. Bob and uh, Mark will be over there for that one. And then uh, on Friday night, Bob and I will be up in North Platte. North Platte High, we're going to see our good buddy Matt Kaminsky and the Bison Bo and the uh, North Platte boys against McCook. Old home week, 60 miles north. There That's you right. go. There you go. So Bison teams. And then the next week is the Southwest Conference Tournament. First round games on Monday. They go Monday, uh, Thursday consolation games, Friday uh, semifinals, and then championships and third place games from North Platte Community College this year on that following Saturday. Cook with the basketball trailer by 3, 42, 39, three and a half minutes left. Humphrey top of the circle. Evan has it now, it's Jacob Gomez-Wilson. Wait, Jacob also almost thought about a 30-footer there from three. Skip pass to Humphrey, takes a three for the tie. Missed it, went over the backboard. Menden will get it back. 
Yeah, it's just so hard for him to get on track so far. And again, I, I, I just got to give kudos to Ryland Holston for uh, Minden. He's really made it tough for uh, uh, Evan Humphrey to get open tonight. Off the inbounds, Humphrey got a hand on that pass. Now they're going to call a foul coming back against uh, Gomez Wilson. And uh, that'll be, Monk Cook's got fouled away, so it'll be the fifth team foul. Yeah, no harm done there. Just kind of a little push in the back, kind of slowed down the momentum for Minden there. So, again, McCook needs to tighten up the defense, get a couple opportunities here. Schroeder off the inbounds, right near the Minden bench, off the inbounds, looking for a white shirt. Gomez Wilson giving him some static, and uh, Jacob going to be called for the foul. That'll be team foul number six. A little overzealous, trying to deny the inbound <laughs> pass there. So, again, but, yeah, now, if nothing else, McCook doesn't have to worry about fouls uh, yeah. to, you know, put him at the line here later. Parson against Hegwood. Across the timeline, still 42-39, Minden. Bison have just not been able to get over the hump, and... and uh, Cut it to one or even tie it. Baseline, nowhere to go for Holston. Inside Bradley and a steal nearly by Humphrey. Now it's picked up loose ball by Gomez Wilson. Now it's Cole Kappel as the ball goes squirting away. Cole now has it. Hegwood backs things out. Kappel has it. What just reset? The Bison kind of moving pretty fast here. 234 left in the fourth. McCook in the half court. Hegwood left hand got it knocked away. Gomez Wilson kick out Humphrey for the tie. He missed it. Rebound backside. Run down by Kappel. Out front, Duggar. 42 39. Bison, another chance here. Gomez Wilson spots up. Three's going to be. Why not? Missed it short. Thought it was online, though. Boy, great uh, opportunities that possession. And on offense, uh, it's going to be a moving screen, I think, Bob. I was looking down, down court. All I can think of is. is well, maybe it wasn't. Yeah, he's talking about Carter Harston, and yeah. he didn't hold his position. He kind of leaned and yeah. turned is what he's saying, yeah. at least. No, So no free throws in the player control foul, but McCook could get it back again with 208 left in 42-39 Minden. Boy, got to cash in on this uh, opportunity here. Inbounds pass, Hegwood right near the Bison bench. By the way, both uh, uh, teams have two timeouts apiece left. Gomez Wilson top of the circle matchup against the bigger Schroeder. Baseline Duggar. Adam had shot for a while. Gomez Wilson, top of the circle. Right side. Inside Cappell. Steps through off the glass. Count it. Chance for the three point play. And a chance to tie with the horizon. Make free throw and a step through from Cole Cappell. Yeah, Minden uh, coaches and uh, fans both wanting to travel on Cole Cappell there. Don't know if he got a little extra shuffling there or not. But again, boy, got to make this free throw. Horizon Bank free throw for the tie and too strong. 42 41. Menden by one, still with a minute 47 left. Lylan Holson across the timeline for the Whippets, trying to get a big win for them at home. Hauseman in a clear out, dumps it inside, offensive foul. Hegwood right there. And. <laughs> I couldn't tell. I, I was I wasn't looking, but I knew that time it looked like it, Josh was there. Yeah, I mean it was close, and but again, you're not going to get any sympathy from the Minden fans. But again, yeah, big big defensive stop by Josh Hagelin. Yeah. 42-41, minute 35 left. Near near turnover. Get out of there. And a tip pass. Oh, a boy, and I, they're going to call a foul. I think on Duggar. Excuse me. He kind of upper uh, undercut that time. Um, Rylan Holston and. It wasn't on purpose. It was just there. No, I mean, and, and and it was really, as they say, incidental contact. Even Adam Ducker's kind of like, I, I, what did I do? You yeah. know, I mean, just that Holston was. Oh, well, he, he was way up there yeah. trying to get oh, the, boy. you know, the deflect the pass. And I mean, again, it looked horrible. I mean, obviously, and thank goodness he's not hurt any worse than it appears that he is. So it's been a one-on-one situation. Seventeen fouls for the Bison. Is Holston to go to the free throw line for a one-on-one? Still forty-two, forty-one. McCook has had plenty of chances here in the fourth quarter. Yeah, they've had a good 35, 45 seconds worth of opportunities down at the other end. Free throws on the way and good, 43-41. Minden by two with 90 seconds exactly left. Eight o'clock hours here, KICXFM McCook, HighPlainsRadio.net, the KIC 961 YouTube channel as well. Holston make a 41 and he does, 44-41. And bounce pass Hegwood. One possession game. And you really don't have to go for a three right now. Minden folks, you can say tell on their feet. Hegwood, baseline Humphrey. Out front out of Hegwood. 
On the move, dumps it out. Duggar, top of the circle for the tie, missed a three. And recovered by Minden with a minute eight left. And Minden will get a timeout. Coach called it from way down court. A minute six left, 44-41. Whippets Minden here shortly on Kicks 96-1. Rich and Bob back here at Minden. Minute six left, Bob, 44-41. Minden by three and with the basketball. Yeah, again, we were talking before. I mean, 42-39 uh, for the longest time. McCook had three different opportunities to tie up the game. Just not able to get it done. So, again, just making it tougher on themselves here in the last minute six. 44-41 and McCook's defense. Again, it's going to have to be tough here. So it's still just a one possession game. Schroeder off the inbounds. Finds Carter Harson. Matched up against Jacob Gomez Wilson. Left right on the offense. Jacob trying to body him up a little bit. Shut off all the passing lanes. And Coach uh, Bloom will burn. That's his final timeout. He had to burn and save possession with 54 seconds left. 44 41. Quick break. Back with more from Minden. Coming up shortly. Kicks 96 1. Forty or 54 seconds on the clock, Bob. 44-41 minute has no more timeouts. McCook's got two to burn. Whippets with possession right now. Yeah, again, trying to deny that inbounds pass. Now we can't have a timeout. Bail them out. So again, Bison got to keep up the pressure and just got to hope for a turnover. You know, just a shame too, Rich. You know, Bison just one, two, three, six. I think they're two out of eight shooting free throws again here in the second half. And they got away with it last night. But yeah. boy, I don't know. It's hard to believe you can get away with that two nights in a row without making some free throws. Bice come out with Hegwood, with Gomez Wilson, Jacob also, uh, Humphrey, Kappel, and Duggar. A lot of these guys played a bunch of minutes tonight. Yeah, Coach Imus has not gone deep in his bench at all tonight. No, just hasn't had the luxury because, again, they've been chasing the whole game. Minden with the basketball. Carter Harson against Josh Hegwood. Picked up a dribble. Now Bradley. Baseline to Schroeder. Up front out of Harson, down to 41 seconds left. Minden by three, 44-41. Schroeder out front. Never an easy place to play here in Minden. Little backdoor cut to Hauser, saves the floor out of bounds. Now Bradley. Holston, 27 seconds left. Hausman now gets fouled by Duggar out front. It had to be Hausman at the free throw line for a one and one. Yeah, boy, that's just, that's tough, you know. I mean, let 30. 40 seconds run off the clock, and again, I know you're trying to play good defense, but now again, you're forced to foul at every cost or every time. One-on-one -on -one situation for Minden, 44-41, Whippets by three. Trying to make it a big free throw right here, make it a two-possession game. Free throw's gonna be on the way, and missed it, rebound, and Bradley got it away from Capel up front, a new life for Minden, but a steal. But then stolen right back by Minden, and now the foul committed. Oh, boy, we had, uh, McCook had a chance. It looked like Duggar had it, and then swiped right back, and then Humphrey had to commit the foul. Yeah, McCook got the break they needed with the missed free throw yeah. there, and again, but again, just kind of a funky, you know, uh, bank off the rim there where Bradley was able to track it down. So, again, Bison got hope for another miss here. Gillen will spell Capel. Give him a quick break here. 17 seconds left, free throw, missed another one, rebounded by Gillen. Still a one possession game in timeout, Coach Joe Imus has got two to burn, he'll burn one of them right now. 14 seconds left, back after a quick break, it's Bison basketball kicks 96-1.
Back here, it was a full time. Now we just took a 30 second break there. Bob, 14.9. Coach Joel Imus is drawing something up in his huddle. It's got to be a three. It's got it's, it's got to be a three point right here. Yeah, Time's running gotta, out. Absolutely, got to come up with that. And again, they had opportunities before and stuff. So maybe we're due here to cash one in. But <laughs> again, two just absolutely thrilling Bison games here. Minden, uh, again, they have no fouls in the teams. Well, you know, actually, what you could do, well, now, nah, I was going to say, do you foul? Because it's, it's 10 team fouls. It's double bonus the rest of the way. You don't want to do that. Right. So, we'll see what McCook has in mind here. 14.9 seconds left here in the late fourth quarter and down by three. Well, and again, Minden may choose to foul, too. But rather than give up a three, they yeah. may go ahead and go for the... Gomez Wilson off the inbounds. And here we go. Inbounds pass Duggar. Can it send it to an overtime? Adam. Oh, the defender fell down and a late is a tip, and they're gonna call over and back. McCook thought maybe well, that was a tip. Now the official is gonna say come in and say from the fourth side it said it was tipped. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, the ebb and flow. Oh, boy, you got to get kid. And Coach Imus is going to burn his final timeout with six seconds left. Quick break back to <laughs> mid and next on Kicks 96-1. Back here to Minden, 6.6 .6 in the clock, Bob, 44-41. Neither team has a timeout left. Last chance, McCook, you got to hit a three to force overtime. That's all? That's all. <laughs> That's all. That's all. <laughs> no problem. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, again, you just hope that, they, again, Coach Imus draws up a good play. They get a good, clean look. And, again, you just, you just feel that if they could ever get there. But, again, they're going to have to work really hard here in the last six seconds to get there. You would think you want to get the ball. I would think it's got to be Humphrey or Duggar, one of the two. Yeah, Evan Humphrey's had a tough night. Too, oh, yeah. So I'm, think, I'm thinking Adam Duggar possibly if you're going to look for something. But let's face it, whoever, it's going to be the first good look. Hit one off the inbounds at midcourt. Trying to find the five-second counts on. Duggar has it. we got plenty of time. Deep three is going to be no good. Capel will get it. Humphrey three is going to be Good! At the buzzer, we're going to overtime. 44 44, Bob. Oh, golly. <laughs> his, wow. only, his only points of the second half, Evan Humphrey. Wow, 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 wow. I was wondering why is Adam Duggar taking it such an early shot? We six seconds left here. Hey, yeah. dude, you got, you got time. And luckily, you know, off the miss, Capel comes back. Finds Humphrey and drills a D. That ball didn't even hit the net. It went, it went down so solid. Yeah, barely, it's that barely even moved anything. So, again, wow. D extra, extra pay for this tonight? <laughs> you know, what do you think? I'll try. <laughs> and both teams gain a timeout, by the way, too, in the extra period. Oh, boy, this is a big-time dagger for Minden, too. I mean, you, you, you virtually lead 98% of the basketball game. And, again, it'll be interesting to see how they respond now. Bison, you would think this could be the shot of adrenaline to get them over the hump. But, uh, you know, again, uh, Minden has hung in there all night long and actually, again, made it so tough on the Bison. 44-44 extra time here at Minden High School. Yeah, and more times than not, in overtime, sometimes it, the team's got that lead, the team fights back, and boy, that team that's had lead just folds. Absolutely, just yeah. Folds. I mean, again, when you've, when you've had it the whole time, and just to see it get away here, so. With the old jump ball. Bradley and Kappel at midcourt will jump it up. Tippin gets it first, and the Whippets. Have control first. Original starting five out there. Actually, no, that's not the case. It's Gil as Gomez Wilson starts in place of Gillen here in the overtime. Parson has it on the low block. Schroeder almost got it picked away by Duggar. 
Schroeder, low block, nowhere to go. Now it's Harson. Boy, tough matchup. Uh, Jacob Gomez, Wilson, and Schroeder. Exactly right. How is the man as the defender fell down? Threes on the way and good. 47 44. Bison got to respond here. Gomez Wilson the other way. Skip pass Humphrey. Three from the right side's on the way. Missed it. Had a good look at it, too. Schroeder backside a rebound. Across the sideline. Almost, almost got a. No, they did. Oh, that was a bad call. Boy, that was a horrible call. It was not a backcourt at all. No. And again, well, and the officials is basically saying that the player had not established himself yeah. in the front court, but I mean, he was there. I thought it was there. Yeah, yeah I thought he it was, was clearly there. there. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Emma Cook looking at back. Trailing by three, 47 44. Duggar across the timeline. Right hand, left hander dribble. Gomez Wilson. Bison trying to pick up a weekend sweep after the big win against Hastings last night. Humphrey, Evan to the bucket through two defenders, missed it. Rebound, Capel, put backs on the way, missed it, drew the foul. Ah, oh, needed a three point play opportunity there. Well, yeah, again, good strong drive by Evan Humphrey there, too. And again, just plenty of bodies in the middle, but Cole Capel, good positioning there, able to go back up with it, get fouled. Bradley's going to foul out with his fifth. That's a shame. Yeah, again, he did not have as, as quite as effective of, of a second half, but um, again, boy, he was a force down low there. So again, not a bad person to get out for the Bison. 47-44, Cole Campbell for a two-shot foul. As again, double bonus for both teams in this overtime. 255 left in the overtime. Free throws on the way and good. Weren't very good in the, for, the, for the free throw line. Fourth quarter, we start off pretty good here in the overtime. Yep, going to need them all. 47-46. Bison trailed by two. Free throws on the way, and this one's good as well. One-point game. Bison full court pressure applied. Draw back, pick up on the man-to-man. -man. Arson across the timeline. One point game. Minden runs her motion against the Bison in half court, uh, man to man. Trying to post up Schroeder, low block against Duggar. Adam trying to hold his ground. And a, and, a, and a bad pass and a steal. Nice job by Humphrey stepping the passing lane. Yeah, absolutely. Bison cut off all, uh, all the passing lanes on that one. Duggar, Humphrey, quick catch and shoot. Three is going to be on the way. Missed it. Maybe kind of pressing a little bit. Yeah, he just not quite. He made the big one there to tie it up. But just the, overall for the night, it's just not had the range from three point. Counting down to two minutes in this overtime. 40 minutes, Minden by one. Hausman out front. Schroeder backdoor cut. It's a beauty. Lamps on the way and good. Ryland Holson on the backdoor cut. Yeah, ran to perfection there. Just the old give and go. And again, backdoor layup. Two minutes in this one. 49-46. Jumpers on the way. Missed it. Humphrey. Long three by Hegwood's on the way and good. Bison tied the ball game up on a Hegwood three. Almost a little. Cole Kappel de definitely, uh, I think right knee is hurting him. I thought he was going to maybe get called for three seconds there because he's having a hard time getting out of the lane. Minute 39 left on the dribble, and it's going to be a foul against, I think it's Gomez Wilson. Help defense, I think, but could be wrong. Maybe Hegwood as well. And uh, they called it on Hegwood. That's, just, that's his fourth. Give a two-shot foul for uh, Carter Harson. Try to put uh, Minden in the back in front. Tied at 49 with a minute 37 left. Free throws on the way, and Minden's missed some big free throws here down the stretch. Yeah, again, they've uh, really, I think they're over their last three. As they could have sold it this way, maybe, possibly, in yeah, the regulation. Yeah, definitely. There were, I mean, teams have had opportunities. Second free throw is going to be on the way. Short. Short. Oh, well, offense rebound, Luke Meyer, put backs on the way, missed it, drew the foul. Force on the board, Luke Meyer's got some build to him, that's for sure, and uh, he'll go to the free throw line for a two-shot foul. Yeah, Adam Duggar is going to pick up the foul, that's going to be his fourth foul, too. Yeah, a little miscommunication by the Bison there on who was covered, who was blocking out who on that free throw. 49-49, free throws going to be on the way and good. 50-49, whip, it's by one, we'll see Brendan Gillen check back in, Cole Campbell will sit.
One more for Luke Meyer. Second free throw is going to be on the way and good. 51 49, buys plenty of time. Minute 37, got a timeout. They need it. Duggar has it, backwards. Cross the timeline. Ah, oh, pass tipped. Loose ball picked up by Minden. And now McCook's going to play some really good defense to get a steal here. Under, we're at minute 19 left. Two point Minden lead. Hausman, actually, that's uh, far side, that's Carter Harson. Double team, Schroeder, and now Hausman. 51-49, Whippets by two, and we're in a minute in this overtime. Hausman is going to be fouled by Duggar, and that's number five on him, isn't it? Yeah, I don't think they yeah. wanted him uh, making the foul out there. I thought they maybe were going to play defense for a little bit longer. Yep, number five. Yeah, because yeah, you just said that, number five, so... Kappel will come back in. And a two-shot foul for Seth Hausman. His first free throw is on the way and good. 59 seconds left, a lot of time left. One possession game, still 52-49, still a one possession game. Second free throw is on the way, and this is too strong. Big re miss, rebound, and I'm going to have a foul called against Minden. Climb in the back against Luca. Ma oh, the official. Yeah, it's got to be. Yeah, I don't know how, how it's different because Gillen had the inside position. Oh, they oh, call it. Come on. He's the wheeze. Yeah, this. The, yeah. This, this is called a makeup foul yeah, that's by this guy that's right exactly here. exactly right. Yeah. 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 He's going, to, he's going against McCook so many times that because Brennan had the position oh, yeah, inside. Yeah, and the guy was wrapped around him yeah. trying to get the ball. Exactly right. Missed uh, free, free throw rolled in. 53-49. Yeah. Well, again, and with this group, you didn't want it to come down to something at the end right. because they won, so. 53-49. Second free throws on the way. 54-49. Inbounds pass Gomez Wilson. Brendan Gillen. Hey, you can't waste much time. You're down two possessions right here. Kappel, they're going to give him the layup. It's good. McCook's got a timeout to burn. They will not take it. It's a three-point game, 54-51. Bison got to get a steal. Do something right here. We're going to five-second count. Schroeder and the foul's going to be called. No, they get a timeout as uh, the coach once again burns that timeout. 38 seconds left. Quick break. Back with more here from Minden next on Kicks 96-1. We're back here to Minden, 38.6 in the clock. Minden's got the ball. Bob, but it's not over yet. Uh, Cook's down by one possession, by three. Yeah, again, it's almost like a twilight zone here, I think. <laughs> it's like a repeat of, you know, of last night. We're just sitting here trying to get, you know, it's a game that never ends type of thing. Same situation happened at the end of regulation. McCook was down by three, managed to get the ball back. And, of course, Hump hits the three at the buzzer to send it over time. And they need right here some, some help right here to get the ball back again. 54-51. Overtime number one. 38.6 seconds left. Minden with the basketball with the lead. Schroeder has it far side. Off the inbounds. Houtman. Lost the timeline. Both teams double bonus. Houtman picked up that dribble. Has no timeouts. Luke Meyer, they want to stay out of that corner. Luke Meyer to the baseline. Black shot. Kappel on the way up. And here comes McCook the other way. Humphrey has it. Gets a screen from Gillen. Brendan, three for the tie. Missed it. Rebound. Campbell. Loose ball. And it's going to be a foul against McCook. Things are getting a little excitable here. Yeah. <laughs> these, guys, these guys might need an escort out of here, to be honest with you. <laughs> yeah. Not and I'm not kidding on that. I mean, no, I'm dead serious. Not, I mean, yeah, yeah, not having a good night. Yeah. It's just, yeah. 
51. Now the officials are talking. I'm not for sure what about what. So anyway, foul McCook and McCook and to be mid in the free throw line shooting two shots. Yeah, whatever voodoo you got now, let's uh, let's get it going on the on the free throw <laughs> shots. Yes, there you go. As I say, there's no timeouts here. Let's get the players on the court and go here. Hegwood picked up his fifth. He fouls out. And Lucas Gomez Wilson will check back in. What a crazy game. 54-51. Oh, oh yes. And Monk, and they meant to miss the free throw. And Lucas, you gotta stay out of there, big guy. You know. And so it's gonna be another free throw again. Yeah, I mean the ref had given the player the ball, so again, everybody has to stand tight after that. And he of course hits the second one. Oh boy. 55-51, four-point game. And one more for Carter Harson. Makes them both. Now it's a two-possession game with 12 seconds left. It's going to be tough. You don't have much time here. you got to hurry and hurry and hurry. Gomez Wilson across the timeline. Bobbled it. Jacob uh, inside to Caffle. Lamps on the way and good. And Coach Imes will burn that final timeout. It's a three-point minute lead. 3.9 seconds left. Back to Minden here shortly. It kicks 96-1. There is uh, 3.9 seconds on the clock's first overtime. It's Minden by 356-53. You don't have any timeouts left. You got to hope for a bad pass someplace, do something, gamble, steal, kick it out for a three for the tie, and we go double OT. That's all. That's you know, all. Not a problem. <laughs> not a problem. But yeah, exactly right. You're going to have to have super denial on the, on the inbounds play here for Minden, and then obviously you're going to have to foul right away and hope they miss a free throw. Bison will come out with Kappel, Gomez, Wilson, both of them, Lucas and Jacob both, and uh, Brendan Gillen and Evan Humphrey. That's well, your five. I can't say the Bison haven't had their chances oh tonight, though, too. I mean, yeah. again, it's just it's just never really been a good karma game for them since the beginning. Schroeder will in man underneath the Bison bucket. What will they do? They'll go bring it Hausman, and they'll kick it back out of bounds. It goes out of bounds off of Jacob Gomez, Wilson on, on the tap. And with 2.6 in the clock, that's just what the doctor ordered right there. Boy, that was almost close to being the turnover yep. they needed. Exactly yep. right. Fumble pass on that inbound. Schroeder has it. Boy, you just throw it long, oh. to be honest with you. Kappel almost had a pick. It goes out of bounds off of, oh, it goes off of, of Minden with 1.1 in the clock. I don't know if he twisted his ankle or if he's cramping up, but Cole Kappel not 100% right now. That is for sure. Trying to walk it off a little. And... Here we go. You got to have it. It's a Hail Mary. You got to get to the three point line and see what happens here. Inbounds pass Brendan Gillen, trailing by three, 1.1 on the clock. Try Humphrey, mid courts, no good. It was a battle. Again, Bison had their chances, no question. The final score in this one is 56 53. Minden wins it in time. Post game is coming up here shortly on Kicks 96 1.
Bob back here at, once again, minute final score, 56-53. Bob and the Whippets win this one in overtime. Well, I'll tell you what, you, you can't live dangerously two nights in a row, it looks like. You know, Bison just, again, dug themselves a little bit of a hole here. Raver will come back, got a chance in overtime, but, again, just could not quite finish things off. And, you know, credit to Minden. They played some good defense, hustle defense, and shot the ball well when they needed to. Bison, unfortunately, again, missed a few free throws, too, down the line, which didn't, uh, did not help things. Minden able to cash in most of their free throws right towards the end as well. So for Minden, uh, Seth Hauserman had six points. Ry Rylan Holston had 15 points. Quiet 15, too, by the way. Carter Harson with five. Cooper Land with five. Jake Ryan with two. Austin Luchtemeyer Luke, uh, with 10 uh, coming off the bench as well. Braden Schroeder with six, and Caden Bradley with seven. So for McCook, uh, led by Cole Kappel with 21, Adam Duggar with 12, Brendan Gillen with three, Evan Humphrey with only six, a three-pointer in the first quarter, a three-pointer to tie the game at the end of the game. And boy, I'll tell you what, I don't remember a game where he's been shut down uh, shot opportunities. Jacob Gomez-Wilson chipped in six, and Josh Hague, before he fouled out, chipped in with five. So 56-53, tough loss for the Bison. Boy, would have liked to got out of here with the win, but uh, again, hopefully a few things to be learned, and again, they may see this team again, so yeah. you never know. Never know. Southwest Conference Tournament, you just never know. Going to wrap up a crazy night. Lady Bison lost a tough one in the opener, and uh, Bison boys here in the nightcap. We'll try it again at Lex on Tuesday. Yeah, I mean, again, a good comeback uh, uh, win for the, and again, a nice rival in Lexington. So, again, Bison boys will have to step it up there, and the ladies will have a chance to win that game as well up there on Tuesday against Lexington. So, again, we'll uh, hope for a little bit better things, and, uh, again, uh, a few things to work on. And, again, I, I mean, I hate to say it ad nauseum because we did it last night too with Mark, but, I mean, Doggone it, got to make, you know, just got to do something better with these free throws. Yeah. I mean, it's just, you cannot be shooting in the in the 50s or whatever it is now uh, for these games. And again, in these tight games like this, it comes back to, to something like that. So again, you know, uh, for the Bison boys, that's okay. I mean, they had a nice run. I think there's five in a row that they had won. So again, they'll regroup. And again, uh, things don't get a lot easier. Uh, again, big rival with Lexington. And then, of course, going to North Platte yeah. next Friday. Uh, certainly no gimme up there. So uh Coach Kaminsky will be ready for the Bison boys coming up there. So, again, uh, redemption on Tuesday, let's hope. And uh, we'll see what happens then uh, for the rest of the week. Thank you very much, sir. Always a pleasure. Let's go get some supper. My gosh, I'm starving. Yummy. For Bob Golke, I'm Rich Barnett. Thanks a lot uh, for listening to our Bison basketball coverage here on Kicks 96.1.